Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Claru. And this is the Nerdy. The Wordy. The Book Club. That's right. We are back for the final discussion on Mistborn Era 1. The no, full just book. Final discussion. Just, yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, this is a good time to let you all know this podcast is brought to you by our divorce. Clarus and I cannot make this marriage uh, last. And so we have decided, uh, in view of yeah. all the other drama going on in the TTRPG space this week, we would join them and end our marriage <laughs> publicly and violently. Yeah, for fun. For Just um, for fun. Yeah, we'll get back together in like uh, a few months, you know, probably about like eight. Yeah. Um, although I don't even know if the divorce would be finalized by then. So. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be a long legal process. Yeah. Uh, we might do more book clubs during the divorce to pay for it, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll do book clubs uh, for <clears throat> funding the divorce. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're going to start uh, book clubbing more controversial books to get more viewership. So next week we'll be covering Ayn Rand. <laughs> Ayn Rand? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Not surprised. Uh, before we get into it, Kenny Theology, thank you for gifting five memberships <laughs> thank you, Kenny. to the community. Greatly appreciate that. We love a green chat. Green means go. Green here. means go. Not away. Go here. Uh, and thank you to everyone over on Twitch as well. That's right. We are we are restreaming this shit. Uh, and soon we're also gonna be doing it on TikTok. Oh yeah, we're gonna well. We're gonna work on that. I mean. This might be bad timing because TikTok might just end. <laughs> nah, it's got it's got six months left. We're gonna eke out every every yeah. view we can in those six, six good months. months. Yeah, that's it. I don't think it's gonna end. I think that um, I think it's gonna be just fine. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on down there. <clears throat> Anyways, so hi, um, chat. How uh, are you? Daniel Kluser wants to know, like, how do you have bangs and then not within two weeks? Well, they're still there. Yeah, she's a magician. The, the bangs like, Hatless still tugged. Exist. <laughs> huh? Hatless tugged is I very funny. What that is. Ayn Rand wrote Atlas Shrugged. It's a... Oh, that's a person. Ayn Rand, yeah. Oh, okay. She's an author. Oh, okay. Well, what? technically she's an author. Uh, Did she write with AI or something? No, God, no, no. Oh. Atlas Shrugged is old. Um, <laughs> I was like, I don't fucking Atlas know. Shrugged is just um like a capitalism... It, it's basically like... If you wanted to read someone jerking off capitalism, oh, so it's it's a favorite of people who uh, want to exploit other people to gain wealth. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I guess. I yeah. Why not? Yeah, we're we're gonna that. book club it. I guess what we don't like it. Here's uh, the problem. <laughs> I only read things that have magic in them. Everything else is boring. Um, so, the magic in the ma magic in Atlas Shrugged is that it's successful. <laughs> that it actually works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That people yeah. that people bought into it. It is make believe. Yeah. <laughs> make believe. This is a good time to tell you that this podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, Misty Mountain Gaming. <laughs> Speaking of capitalism. <laughs> Speaking of capitalism and make believe, go buy some dice so you can make believe with magic numbers. Mm hmm. Let's uh, all let's all go over there and use code Nerdy Nightly fifteen for fifteen percent off your order. They make everything from dice to more dice to even more dice. They uh, they make other things, but if you're a dice goblin, do you care about those other things? Probably not. You're not you're not a DM screen goblin. No, just you're like, a goddamn guys dice goblin, and I am a fucking dyslexic. So you're get a off dice my goblin. dick. I feel you laughing at me. Go to MixMailGaming.com, y'all. They're pretty great. Kenny, welcome back to the nerd table. Look, if I will shill for one thing in this life, it will be things that feed my dopamine receptor. Mm -hmm. And rolling pretty, pretty math rocks feeds my dopamine so, so damn good. Yeah, that is totally valid. Um, Kenny is over there trying to buy TikTok so it can be owned by Murica. Uh, Kenny, if you, if you want, I'll go in on that with you. I'm sure between the two of us, we have enough money to buy one TikTok. Yeah. You can buy one single TikTok. My rate is $500. TikTok. You know who so. I think should buy TikTok? Call me Chris. I think she should own TikTok and she should run it. <laughs> like, sure, but I don't even think she has enough money for that. No, but oh, she's moving I'm not to saying, the States. I'm not saying that she should. Well, that's, but they, the States want to, to be owned. Oh, right, right. States. They want it to be that. I think that Call Me Chris running TikTok would be hilarious and I would watch that web series. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I would. I would watch it. Um,. Yeah, yeah uh, Daniel Kluser totally says, yeah, there's stuff in Ayn Rand, like, it's better to destroy something you created that would help people than to let the government force you to use it to help people and not make money. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So now we know how what books Big Pharma is reading. <laughs> a thousand percent. No, 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 no joke. A thousand percent. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, Ayn Rand would very much be in the like, oh no, insulin should be six hundred dollars. Why wouldn't it be? I hate it here. I'm not here, but like you know the general here. Yeah. Um Wow. Cool. 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 Wow. Well, yeah. We're not. We're we're talking about the uh, the demise, not capitalism. This is more like we're talking about the what? Not capitalism. Yeah, but what was the word that you said? Demise. Demise. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sentence didn't really come together the way that I wanted it to, and I was hoping you wouldn't draw attention to it. But I. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't, yeah, I very much did not know what you said. And that I'm is, always going to draw attention to it. That is A-OK. -okay. You know, you're the one who said Guy Stoblin, so. Guy Stoblin. It's. I have a medical condition and you have no excuse. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Does brain things. Don't really know how it works. Um, Knucklebone of Fickle Fortune says, Hey, so you have TTRPGs. Have you heard of a new system in development called DC20? It's awesome. I don't know DC20. No. I know MCDM, which I want to run once they launch their beta test. Um, but I don't know DC20. Yeah, I haven't I'll have to heard look into of that. that. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about TTRPGs. That's tomorrow when Dragonlance returns for session 10. Holy mm. shit, we're in the double digits. Um, we will be live at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our usual crew as they head to meet up with a gnome to find out who makes those dastardly boiler tracks. But for yeah. now, Hi. let's dive into <laughs> the Hero of Ages. Let's Clarus, you have now read an entire Mistborn. You have read one whole Mistborn. I have read one whole Mistborn. I have consumed the Mistborn. You've had a week off. Actually, no, I think that was Ellen. I don't know. I feel like... They're both consuming them and born pretty regularly. I meant the like. I meant Vin and Ellen were consuming each other's genitals. Until they died. Yeah. Vin's been gobbling Mistborn for about a year now. Jesus Christ. So this week we start with Smut Corner. <laughs> Apparently. Vin has been gobbling Mistborn. Yeah. The like, uh, wobble it, I'm a gobble it. That's, that's Vin's song. Yeah. There we go. I'm having a hard time grabbing this thing. It's fine. We We're go. just opening Discord. Don't worry about it. We have questions. I mean, you have questions, and we don't have answers, but we're going to make them up for you. Yeah, we're going to do some improv. entertainment. All right. <clears throat> uh, how are you feeling about it now? Great. Fucking love it. Yes, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good book. Pretty good series. Uh, if this is, like, what people consider, you know, like, not as good Brandy Sandy, I, like, am so freaking excited for what we're in for next. Like, I... Yeah. I love these. Like, I can totally see, the, like, books in the Cosmere becoming some of my, like, all-time favorite. Cause oh, I, 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 I think, like, I, I absolutely loved Mistborn Arrow 1. I want to read it again. Um, I, like, actually did start, like, listening to it. Um, and then got busy. And then I... I I was on set. There were things happening. Like, I I, I could not uh, make any headway in it. Yeah, yeah. But I definitely did, like, restart it. Oh, my God. It. Casually dropping that you worked on a TV show this week. Oh, your yeah. life's so hard. My you didn't get to hard. read the book because you were working on a TV show. Yeah, that's why I didn't stream on Wednesday. Sorry about it. <laughs> James Ross says, remember when she was 16 and Nerdy felt bad about that sex joke? Yeah. Because guess what that's my line if you're not an adult i don't i don't want to make sex jokes about you yeah but once you're an adult it's fine yeah yeah it's weird that, how that the line rules. that yeah them's, that them's is the rules the legal rule there and you know what you know who broke the rules p diddy and guess what shit's going bad for him right now follow the rules wow yeah that kesha song did not age well <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what feeling like P. Diddy means anymore, <laughs> and uh, I don't want to know. You know, I'm okay. I'm okay, actually. Um, uh, well, yeah, I, I I agree with you. I'm pretty hot on it. I think that the, you know, obviously, you know, I, I think last week I compared the ending to Wheel of Time in a way that I was like, this is kind of like the feeling I wanted from the end of Wheel of Time. And I don't know in hindsight if that's 100% fair, because the the series are just so so different in length that trying to compare 
the gravity of bringing all of the Wheel of Time to a head versus the very concentrated story that is Mistborn. I think that they're just very different. And I sure. I don't necessarily... I, I, looking back on some of the statements I made in that comparison, I'm kind of like, I, I don't know that Wheel of Time, with how unwieldy it got in the middle, could have ever really brought it all the way home for me. Mm. Um, and Mistborn just is such a... Um, is such an intentional story all the way through that's so thought out. Yeah. I, I don't know that there's any wasted time in this trilogy. Mm-hmm. It really... Because even, like, things that I, at the time, was like, why? Okay, that seems so fucking random. Yeah. Three books later, you're like, holy shit, that was the clue that unlocked everything. Yeah. I was just not smart enough to see it at the time. Um, and I, I... Yeah, I just... I really do think... Um, I, I really think that there, this series... This series is what I want out of fantasy. Oh, a characters percent. that I love, yeah. characters whose relationships to one another I'm in love with, uh, characters. And, and again, like the first things I say are characters. I am a characters guy, right? I don't love Lord of the Rings because it has the most intricate plot line of all time. Mm-hmm. It's a get the fucking thing to the thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But the characters in Lord of the Rings are why I think it's among the greatest fantasy ever written. Yeah. I I would lay down my life for every member of the Fellowship. And I feel the same way about Mistborn. Yeah. In a way that is is encouraging. I you know I, I find at thirty one I find it a lot harder to get into new things now, um, partially just because of like time commitments. Um, well, no, I say that, but like Critical Role, I've I've kind of fallen in love with those characters. So yeah, but that's because you can do other things at the same time. That's true. Uh, Critical that Role helps. Critical Role works really well for my my like autism because I have a really hard time doing one thing at a time. Yeah. Um, I get bored. And so because I can have it on and do something else, it's the perfect... It's why I love football over every other sport is because I, I know that I can only have to look up every, like, minute every for 10 while. seconds to watch the play. Yeah. And then I can get back to work. Yeah. Anyway, my, my brain's a mess. But um, th- this, this gave me the same feeling of reading A New World that I got from reading Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. Yeah. In a way that I, I haven't experienced in a lot of books, right? Yeah. Um, in the fantasy genre. Uh, I, I definitely think that my taste leans more sci-fi, so I get what I want from sci-fi a little bit easier mm, than okay. I do from fantasy. Um, but this was the kind of fantasy that really, really, really works for me. Mm-hmm. And a, a, a lot of that leans on the characters actually communicating with one another. Yeah. Which, as we talked about in Wheel of Time, was like, I was so frustrated because I these people, the, those people never felt real to me. Yeah. Because they never communicated in a way that I felt he, like real people communicate to one another. And because I got that here, yeah, I was so fully invested in, fully invested in this world, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I just I, I I the more I think about Mistborn Era One, the more I like it. Yeah. The further we get away from it, like the more I am like pulling away at my own feelings about it and being like, do I really like that? And like investigating it and being like, yeah, I do. Like I. I there, there isn't anything that I look back on the trilogy now, having finished it, and now sitting, you know, a week later. There's nothing I look back on and I'm like, yeah, well, maybe I was lenient on that. Or maybe I'm, like, more invested as I'm getting further away, which is what I want from a story. Yeah, I, 100%. I, like, I am genuinely so excited to go back and, ex- like, and, and experience this trilogy for a second time. Whereas, obviously, if we're comparing to Wheel of Time... I don't have that same excitement because I know, like, for to get the story as a whole, there's, like, parts that, like, you know, I'm going to have to just try and get through. Whereas yeah. this was just so good from, from start to finish. Um, Judah Canizares. Thank you for that Thank you for that super, super chat. chat. Sando was actually picked for Wheel of Time after Mistborn. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I think that if you look at the fact that Randall Thor is um, the bad guy in both series... Uh, it definitely makes sense to be like, hey, they handled Randall Thor really well in Mistborn. Let's have him uh, end Randall Thor series in Wheel of Time as well. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. And uh, Johnny Coleman. Johnny, thank you for that super chat. Uh, late start, wife and daughter and I have colds. Oh, that was us last weekend. I'm so no, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm glad you started Smut Corner early. It's always my goal. Well, we like to, to, we like to start with the Smut end. Smut Corner early. We like to start at the end. We um, like to start with the finish, you know. I mean, hey, that's been my problem my whole sexual career. Uh, <laughs> career? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Where's the money? I didn't say that I was successful at my career. <laughs> Just... 
Fair, fair, fair. Okay, okay. Just, just checking, just checking. I was confused. There are plenty of people who walk away from careers with no money. I was like, wow, we should be making a lot more. I No, it doesn't pay well for men. Oh. It pays significantly That's, less. Then you have the wrong audience. Fair. <laughs> Anyways, um, we yeah, have some questions. So, so yeah, no, I really like it. I um, I'm a big fan. Um, JF Buzzer says fan. that sounds like ADHD combined with autism. That is what I have. I understand that. I have only ever been diagnosed with autism. There's a, I, I, I understand what you're saying. There's probably a good chance I got both. But uh, but I go with what a doctor told me. You got kid. Which you, <laughs> which you were like, no, it can't be that. There's that no way. Ago. That was a long time ago. Uh, Titanus, thank you for joining the Nards. Uh, the most Titanus, fun in this read along was watching you pointing at unrealistic things, knowing that those criticisms would all be answered later. Yeah, and that's what I want. The right? bacteria. The ash eating symbiotic bacteria. Yeah. I but I want I want to feel like the author thought about it. Yeah. I want the author. I want to feel like the world. Because here's the thing. Here, here's my here's the way that fantasy works for me, and it, this isn't how it works for everyone. And this causes friction because I understand that other people are so much more forgiving of things than I am. It's probably the autism, but for me, the if you tell me, hey, the the Inquisitors, they get their powers because. You stab somebody with a metal spike, and then you stab it into the Inquisitor, and the magic of God gives them powers. And I go, okay, I buy that those people have powers. End of story. I will invest in what you tell me is true about your world. If you then break that because you want to have a cool moment with a different character. Sure. Mm-hmm. I go, well, now I don't care about the first thing either. It's not just that I don't care in that second moment. Mm -hmm. It's that I also don't care about the first moment. Yeah. Because you've now broken my immersion on all of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's all just bullshit. And my, abil like, my ability to maintain your bullshit is pretty high, I think. I think it, because it makes it feel like an author is writing it as opposed to a real world. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah. It, God went, um, actually, we're going to have it be a little different this time so I can have this cool moment in my book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's where, like, that's where uh, Attack on Titan fell apart for me. Mm. And, and in things, and honestly, like this last arc of One Piece that I'm reacting to on my other channel, there's a lot of people in my comments being like, well, you just kind of have to forgive this. And I'm like... Oh, you can forgive this and it not bother you in terms of your immersion of the whole thing. I can't forgive it without forgiving my care for everything else that's involved. Yeah. Right? If it, I'm forgiving yeah. this moment, then what I'm doing is I'm letting go of my ability to give a shit about your story. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. I want to be like I am in Mistborn or like I was in the first 80 episodes of One Piece where yeah. I was like, oh, this is damn near perfect. Yeah. And I never felt like my immersion was broken because I you wanted to have a cool moment or you wanted to yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Blue, and thank you so much for 10 gifted memberships. Blue, thank you so much. There's some green in this chat. That's you. That's too it. sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's so kind. Oh, my God. There's, there, our chat is a mess now. I know. It's because, it's cause like, Stream Elements also does the thing, and I'm like, Stream Elements, you don't have to do the thing. Yeah. It's, 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 stupid bots. They think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, Blue, thank you so much. Emberize says, it's when you start actually paying attention to day and night in TV shows and you realize that some days last 20 minutes. The worst oh, day God. to night shift I think I've ever Snake seen. Snake Eyes. No, no, Madam Web. Oh, that was bad That too. was bad. They walked 10 minutes to the fucking diner and they're suddenly in full night. I was like, what just happened? No, but it happened so many times in yeah, Snake, Snake Eyes. Yeah, Snake Eyes was terrible. We were in theaters being like, what the fuck? Like, they would yeah. just change the lighting based on how they wanted to light that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would go day to night, dusk, evening, twilight, morning. And I was like, ah, what is happening? Well, and, and one one of the worst examples of that is Wheel of Time Season 1. The the finale. The the eighth episode of Wheel of Time Season 1, the day to oh. night cycle of that is nonsense. It's, it's yeah. So much so, yeah. Not my favorite. It's big questions. It leaves big questions in your brain of like, what, how, why the fuck did the... Do, do, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, I just, I feel like what Brandon Sanderson does in being such a meticulous planner 
in terms of how the world functions. I don't know that he... Pro I, I'm not saying he, like, planned out every beat for his characters and all that stuff. Yeah. But I do believe that he meticulously planned how the world, like... The, I bet he could explain to me the economy of Luthadel. Sure. And I would buy into it. Yeah. And... You know, I, I think that I think that that's so important when you're telling a longer story. We watched um, Pneumonia yesterday. Our reaction's going to go up soon. Yeah. And I, at the end, I kind of like jokingly was like, there are some nitpicks um, in the post conversation. Yeah. And it was because I was like, the the economy of this world makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah. But, but it's, it's fine because it's a movie. Story. Yeah. And I I don't really ask as much of a movie because you have ninety two minutes to two and a half hours. Unless you're, if you're, if your movie's three hours, everything better fucking make sense. But if you're telling me a 90 minute movie and you're like, hey, we don't have time to explain all this other shit. We're really focused on a story. I'll give you that in 90 minutes. Absolutely. But if you're going to do a multi-book series, that world has to make sense to me for me to keep coming back. Yeah. And that is one thing I think Robert Jordan did very well is I, I really did feel like I understood and he understood the economy of a moving an army in that world. Yeah. Like, that side of it really worked for me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just... I the, Brandon Sanderson is so meticulous here in a way that I just... I felt consistently supported as a reader of the world. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm like, I, I can't wait to go back and pick up on all the things that he left for me to discover on two, three, four, fifth reads, you know? Yeah. Um, cause I, I think that like, he seems like that kind of artist where it's, you know, it's not just like a one-time thing. Like you can go back and you can find more clues or get a different read out of a scene because of mm -hmm. what it means later on. And I freaking love that. Yeah. I also really appreciate Brandon Sanderson managed to create a fantasy world that is heavily, heavily laced with tropes from that world mm. that don't lean on stereotypes that I feel are super tangible to, or, or you, that you can't really tie to real world stereotype. Yeah. Like I feel like he did a really good job of keeping the, the, the fantasy racism and the fantasy slavery and all of those things unmoored from my feelings about real world stuff mm -hmm. uh, in a way that I, I thought uh, is, is a really hard thing to do, uh, in my opinion, especially because I am so opinionated about that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I just thought that he created a world that genuinely felt like its own world. Yeah. Um, but that the, the stakes felt human and not like they, the stakes came from magic. Yeah. Um, I, and so I, I thought he was really ultimately very successful in that. I Like the terrorist people feel like a very... Uh, unique society yeah um and uh same same with the the uh chandra i i felt like the chandra became one of the most fascinating parts of the whole series yeah and tensoon became one of my favorite characters yeah and so 100%. i yeah right like i, I just I, I felt really i i was impressed consistently with his ability to world build something that really, I, I wasn't sitting here being like, oh, this is like the allegory for this thing that happened in real life or this moment in history. It, it really, it stands on its own in a way that, um, other than some of the stuff that we tied back to like Mormonism, uh, you know, like some some of that stuff I think is very funny, but. It's more, yeah, it, it never like impedes no, on, so. on the story, right? But we did talk about how like neither of us would ever be able to write something like this because of the perspective yeah. of, of the creator of it and like I, I love that I think that that's what art is for that's what stories are for yeah um <clears throat> Jude I thank you for that super chat uh, Lars Vin cosplay when uh, I've got a few lined up first so I don't know I feel like you and I doing Kelsier and Vin would be easy yeah yeah we would just have to figure out what the cloaks look like yeah um I mean it would just be like tassels right it just be a lot of tassels that are just like sewn in at the shoulders. Sewn in at the shoulders. We would basically just need to build a hood uh -huh. that like goes just over the shoulder uh -huh. and then just sew a bunch of black tassels off of it. Oh, I was thinking like the way that it would be done is like it is all one piece and you cut the pieces up from it. Um, I think that's way harder to do. Then sew on individual tassels? I don't know about that. Yeah, because if you get like really high quality fabric, you don't even have to hem them all. It can keep its own. It can keep its structure pretty well without having to like 
hem each one. Depends on but what then, it's made but out But then of. that's one layer. And I think the whole point would be that you would want to, like, have multiple layers. And oh. so you would sew, you would we sew. We are picturing these cloaks very differently. I think that the way that I would do it is I would sew like one layer on top and one layer on the inside so that it like, and offset them. So it has sort of a like three dimensional thing mm-hmm. with a, like a dark gray fabric on the back of the tassel and black on the front so that there's like a uh, visual depth to it. Yeah. And that sounds like a lot of work. Oh, it'd be a lot of work. I'm not saying it wouldn't be a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, I know. In my head, it was m- much easier. <laughs> anyway, uh, we should probably get to some questions from you guys. We don't have a PowerPoint today because there was no one else to cast left. Because how do you cast Hensoon? He's mostly a dog. Or he's Kelsier's body. So Yeah. Um, I In the live action version of this, I guarantee you, Tensoon will spend more time in Kelsier's body. Because the, whatever actor they bring in as Kelsier, they're going to want to have back. And in order to get that actor in those movies, they're going to have to give him some juicy stuff. That's fair. And so I, or, or they'll film it all. If I was them, if I was them, I would, even if movie two and three aren't picked up, I would cast and film all of the Kelsier stuff for books two and three. Mm. Um, and then be like, hey, you're done. We don't need your scheduling issues for the next three years while we yeah. do everything else. Yeah, 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 But I would get that actor in. I would film all of the Tensoon stuff immediately. Yeah. Um, and that, that way you can have that actor back and not have to worry about, like, scheduling or, you know, are they willing to come in and do one day? Yeah. Do it all when you have them the first time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, which is what, uh, so many things should do. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll start a cosplay fund if we want to do like, um, cause it's like a bit of a warmer <clears throat> cosplay, like one of like the winter cons. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. Nerdy, uh, Jonathan O'Neill says I can be Marsh. I, there's no fucking way I'm walking around a con with, with those things fucking in your things. Eyes. Yeah. With, with. Well, and with, like, sp- having to glue spikes all over, yeah. it, it would be an amazing cosplay. I just, I don't love cosplay enough. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that is a lot of, like, prosthetic work that neither of us have any experience in. All right, uh, I am the Synod. I know what that means now. Uh, it says, uh, in a more modern version of Hero of Ages, Sanderson changes the text of Seized's Notes Less of Bornus Lightly. There are still two base metals and their alloys that no one knows about. Given your knowledge of the symmetries of allomancy, can you predict the effects of these new metals? Four marks. Uh, you may use the <laughs> Ars Arcanum in the back of the book to remind you. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I am really good at this. Okay, so we have physical, we have mental, we have time. What would be the fourth category? What's like the fourth dimension? The fourth dimension. Time travel? I don't know. You get to hop through the multiverse? Physical, temporal, and mental. I, I don't know what the fourth thing is, right? I think that's the biggest problem. Oh, I don't even think it says the... What? Those, like, categories back here. No, but it says it throughout the book, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, like, a quick reference chart that it doesn't really have. Would it be, like... Hmm... I knew that people were going to ask this question and like, I, I like don't know. <sighs> oh, enhance. Oh, aluminum and duralmin are. Right, 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 right. And electrum, right? Huh? Electrum is the anti... Oh my god, what is the opposite? Is it the anti Yeah, no, so aluminum and duralmin are in like the enhancement category, but duralmin is an alloy, right? Yeah, okay, so gold and electrum are the two that What? Gold gold and electrum um see the past, see the future. Yeah, the, so so the gold electrum um gold electrum atium and what's the malatium? Malatium? Oh, that's the 11th metal. Yes. So that season, so Malatium sees into other people's pasts. Yes. Okay, so those are the four temporal. And then the physicals are iron, steel, tin, and pewter. Yeah. And then the emotionals are brass, zinc, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, brass, zinc, copper, bronze. So yeah, so a- aluminum and duralumin are the two that are like kind of outside of 
groupings of four. But there's only two medals left then. Yes. What, but that have why, to be why did he in change? the same category of aluminum and duralumin. Then I don't really... Here's the thing. I don't really understand the note to Lesta Bornis then, because how are we missing four medals to get we're to not. 16 if we already have 14? No, he said we're missing two medals. But there are two base medals and their alloys that no one knows about. Wait, one, two, three, four. 14. That doesn't make sense. Ah, Scafandi, thank you for that super chat. Scafandi, Thank you for hello. saying hi, even though you're sleepy. Good morning. Chad, are we, are we wrong here? Are there 18 medals? Because that kind of breaks the entire end of the book. Yeah, no, it has to be 16. Unless it's 16 metals and 16 alloys. Well, no, because then the whole ATM thing doesn't work. That would be crazy. The god metals aren't allomancy and don't count towards the 16. Oh! What are god metals? ATM. Because it's ruin, it's it doesn't count towards the six. Wait, but no, that doesn't make sense. No, because the ATM was part of the sixteen thing that led was one sixteenth of the people were able to burn ATM. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Judah, thank you for that super chat. Judah, thank um, you. But yeah, no. So it has to be. So the other two have to be. I think that they just mistyped that there's two. No, because in a modern version, Sanderson changes the text of Sazed's note to Lesa Bornis slightly. Oh, so it's a spoiler. Because it's been, because Brandon Sanderson rewrote more medals into the, st the story. Hmm. All right, here's the thing. There, we still know that the, the, how the groupings work. So uh, aluminum and duralumin have okay. to have, like, uh, another two, another alloy and another metal in their grouping, right? Because mm -hmm. it's four, 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 like, you know. Um, so what, so so we know that aluminum destroys all the metal that the person has, is burning, and then duralumin, like, enhances it by, like, getting rid of it. So... There's got to be two more metals that influence the powers that people already have. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find, I want to read the, I want to see if our version has this version of the note in it. Um, I don't know. No, our version says, P.S., there are still two metals that nobody knows about. Yeah. The And their alloys isn't in here. Yeah, uh, Johnny Coleman says, you're forgetting about the metal that turned Ellen into a Mistborn. That's a good call. Johnny, thank you for that super chat. Um, Yeah, I just, like, figured that that was, like, a piece of God, but I guess, yeah. Because if, if, if we know that there has to be two metals that... Did I miss a... Uh, I, I... <gasps> No, there's a metal that gives people powers and a metal that takes it away, like permanently. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, so you yeah. can like unmistborn somebody. Oh yeah, ours I did miss a DM from you. I'm sorry. Uh, this Just is now? Wobs. I don't know what this. I don't know what this message would have meant in terms of this question. Also, you guys approved the question, so I, the mods approved the question. So this isn't on me, okay? Uh, whatever. It's um, fine. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. I, I obviously I don't know how I like, feel about it in the future. I feel like it does kind of change things about Mistborn in a way that I don't love, but Yeah. Cuz if there's 18 Very medals George Lucas of him. If there's 18 medals all of a sudden, then why was it 16 the whole time? But I don't I I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. We'll we'll deal with this later. Oh, uh, uh how do you turn off stream mode? Great. Um, Pilks says, having finished the season, which characters, if any, do you think we'll see in Era 2? The season. Um, who do we think we'll see in Era 2? I'm assuming Seized will be mentioned. If not, like, like I, I've, if the epigraphs continue, I have a feeling that epigraphs might come from Seized in mm -hmm. the first book of Era 2. Mm -hmm. That would make sense to me. Uh, I also think that uh, that's it. 
Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, CZ is there, present, or mentioned. Um, I don't think that anyone else is there. I think that maybe uh, Lestabornis is mentioned. I think because... Lestabornis' ancestors are in it, for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, like their descendants. Or, yeah. like, in it is in the future, and they write about the original people who, once everything got fixed, how yeah. they, you know, how they went about resetting up society and, like, all of those things. So I, I think that Lestabornis is mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised if we get mentions of the crew in, like... Lore? Or, or in like the the like the, there's a school that's named after Ellen. Oh. Like if it, like if Venture University or Venture Academy or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we got like um just just that these character that because Lester Bornis kind of at least says it kind of sets up that he's going to be a leader moving forward mm -hmm. uh, for this new society. I wouldn't be surprised if he entrenched his friends' names into that new society. Yeah. In a way that you know. Um, allows their their memories to live on. Yeah, I, I think that era two might be a lot about the legacy of revolution, mm -hmm. and so I'm curious to see how uh, it remembers the original revolutionaries. Yeah, but it also might not be about that at all. I don't know. Um, I but I definitely think I think Sez will be present if not in some capacity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, Knucklebone of Fickle Fortune says, what do you guys know about Era 2? Nothing. I think that it takes place 200 years later. And that's... You know that or you think that? You're I guessing. I have no idea. Oh, okay, yeah. My, I don't know. I, I, I literally know nothing. I think that it takes place later and that technology has advanced. Because I yeah. saw a cover at Barnes & Noble where you, they have guns. Oh, so it turns into fucking Shadow and Bone over here? I don't know. Becomes like steampunky almost. I, the only thing I know is because I walked through a Barnes and Noble and looked at a Brandon Sanderson cover and went, "Oh, that's weird." And then I you're like, on. "That's strange." It was two not dudes. Gonna ask questions. Yeah, exactly. Not, not even gonna. It was not gonna worry two about dudes it. on a red cover and one of them had a gun and that's like the that is the that is the amount of knowledge Do you I have know about what book it was? It's called Alloy of Law. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> It's probably in there somewhere. Um, it's yeah. a dope cover. It, I, I it honestly really, Look, the really made me want to read the book. Sick. I yeah. like. I love the design of yeah. these books. I think they're great. Um, Damn, Barnes and Noble. Their spoilers. I, I don't really feel spoiled by that no, personally. I, I think that I'm gonna have the, to read the book at some point. Yeah, I think by the end of this, we can assume that like because the Lord Ruler stagnated technology so much that there's going to be. Um, a lot of discoveries, especially uh, if people are inspired by a person like Ellen, yeah, mm -hmm. um, who was a researcher, ph philosopher type person. So, yeah, I know. I, I, th I thought it was a good cover. I'm, I'm excited to read the book. Um, yeah. I'm excited to meet the dudes. Uh, you know that the vibe I got from the book was, um, interestingly, was Sherlock and Watson, cool. but not Benedict Cumberbatch, like like actual like Sherlock and Watson. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I love that. Yeah. Um, Sweet and Savory asks, in the last book club recap, I asked you, how do you think things would have changed if Tensoon had never taken Orser's body? And y'all said, not much. Do you still feel the same? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I do. I feel very different. I think that Orsur, yes, because I think that Orsur would have been more personally offended by having to take the dog bones. I think that he would have seen it as more a betrayal by Vin because they had previously been partners. But because Tensoon was doing it for Zane, I think that he was able to forgive Vin for the like indiscretion of making him wear dog bones. Okay. And was able to move on from that and create a relationship that built into something really beautiful for mm -hmm. the Chandra as a whole. Obviously with a terrible end for the Chandra and I feel bad for all of them. Yeah. But I, I, I do. I, I think that... I don't think that Orsor would have been able to not see Vin as the villain of his own story after the dog moment in a way that Tensoon was able to move on from it. See, I think um, I think the exact opposite. I don't know that it would have changed too much. I think the like um, the intricacies might have been different, but we know that Tensoon was kind of like the most docile of the third generation. And so I think that Orsur what? would have, yeah, yeah. No, Tinsun was no, no. always the they, goodest boy. They thought that he was. Well, he wasn't though. He that, that the whole point was that he wasn't the most docile. They just were under the impression that he was. How was he because not? He, 
<clears throat> so so they the the that whole thing about him being like the most like dedicated to his contracts mm -hmm. was because he wanted to be out in the world. Yeah, but he never like questioned anything while he was home. That's why like he always like was seen because the third generation was kind of seen as a little bit rebellious, and he was the least rebellious out of all of them. So I think that Orsor, I, I don't know if I, I don't know how Orsor would have felt in terms of the dog's body. That's that's where I'm like, oh well, it could go either way. But I do think that Orsor would have been more likely than uh, Tensoon to kind of upend things, you know, um, get to know Vin, realize that she's the hero of ages or think that it is, and go back and and mm. and make a statement and say something about it. Actually, um, you know but what? I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to hold to my opinion. It would be very different. And the big reason why is that Orsor alone would never have been able to do any of it. Because he just had strength. Oh, he the... He did not have the blessing of... of potence. He didn't no. have the... Well, Presence. He didn't have the brain one. The he breast, only had yeah. strength. And the, there, there's no way... Or Yes. I No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand by this. Or Sir would have been no help. Or Sir would have gone mad if he had gone back and been imprisoned. <laughs> then, yeah. Yeah, Tensoon is like, yeah. oh, well, yeah, the only reason is because of my blessing. And I'm like, okay. And Or Sir would have never killed Tensoon and taken his blessings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least I don't think so. And so I, I, I think that without Tensoon's blessing, you would have nothing. Oh, yeah, Vin would have also died against Zane without Tensoon. I, but I, but Or Sir, I think, would have well, no, helped. No, I think, yeah. Zane. Or Sir would have helped in that fight. But, but in a different way. But no, I, I, I think that the big difference between Tensoon and Orsor is the, their blessings. And Tensoon having both is the only reason he was able to do what he did. Right. And Orsor, people, to be fair, Orsor was part of the plot to overthrow father. He was a part of that plot 100%. None yeah. of it was his plan, right? Whereas Tensoon, because of his blessing of, I think potency is the strength one. Yes, and presence is the presence. One. Because of the blessings of presence, yeah. Tensoon was able to mentally do the gymnastics around the court of yeah you're right i think that the blessing of presence definitely makes a difference there well and um, but but specifically having both blessings like Tensoon needed both to accomplish what he accomplished yeah and so yeah no that's fair without without or source blessing Tensoon would not have been able to get um Seized to the homeland in or you know what i mean like there's so many ways in which Tensoon needed both blessings in order to accomplish everything that he accomplished. Yeah. That Orsor on his own would not have been able to do all of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so yes, sweet and savory. I do think Tensoon I I you know, it works out the way that it works out. Uh M Dash says, which two characters from Mistborn Era One would you most like to have a drink with and why? Which ooh. two characters? Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll tell you who it's not. Zed. I know I'd have a drink with Say Zed. I don't know. I'd be like, look, I'm happy for you and your religions, but like Yeah, but you don't like talking about that stuff. I I I having an intellectual like brandy with Say Zed and talking about that would be a fun evening brandy. for me. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. But that's that's a taste thing between you and I. That's a yeah. thing. Uh, I wouldn't it wouldn't be Vin and uh, Ellen for me. Vin doesn't seem like a great conversationalist. No. So yeah, no, I'm yeah, that's fair. And honestly, like Ellen doesn't either. <laughs> I'm happy they found each other. Ellen literally like got together with his friends to like debate philosophy. Yeah, you know what I was doing in college? Having fun. Sure. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> there were philosophy nerds in my college. I just didn't hang out with them on the weekend. Mm. We had a we had a spirited debate in class, and then we went home and we got drunk and, you know, I think Ham, partied it up. I think Ham would be fun because Ham would ask interesting questions, but like not care to like have to find an answer to them. You know, yeah. You know, I think Ham would be great to go for drinks. Um, I I would want Shan Alariel and <laughs> Shan and Straff. I want to have the worst night of my life. That sounds awesome. Um, Ah uh, man, uh, yeah, no, Ham's Ham's a good choice. I, I I honestly like I would love to just sit quietly at a bar with clubs and just not talk. That's my <laughs> that's my perfect evening. Just enjoy a nice drink. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. No, I think I think I think getting a drink with Ham and Breeze would be fun. Marsh has a bit. Marsh the the problem with Marsh is that Marsh is either possessed by the devil or he's moping, cold, and like stares at you with his like steel gaze. 
But even if you get with like drinks with him like before he becomes a Steel Inquisitor, he's still just like sad about Mare. And, well, no, like, he's like he's, he's. They describe him as being like what, what was his nickname? Like Cold Eyes or um, Iron, Eyes. Iron Eyes. I'm like I don't need to go have a drink with Iron Eyes. Yeah, Kelsier. I, I think it would definitely for me be Kelsier because fuck that would be fun. Okay. And I don't know Kelsier and Ham. Maybe I feel like that would probably be the pair. All right. Yeah. I like that. That's fun. Um, Pilks asks, what do you think would happen if Vin had access to explosives? <laughs> well, she kind of was an explosive. She just goes, Duralumin, and it's... Yeah, I guess it, it depends on what kind of explosives. Yeah, like, are we talking about a stick of dynamite or, yeah. like, a nuke? <laughs> There's a lot of, like, room. I feel like Vin, I feel like Ruin would have <laughs> loved if they had explosives. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although, you know, with a, it, it, if the world had existed in the advent of explosives, Firebirds. then you, you would have a huge difference in the way that the world is built, right? Mm. Like, there's a reason why our cities don't have walls around them. Yeah. Nowadays. And it's because, what the fuck is a wall going to do? Yeah. Just create shrapnel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no. Uh, it's interesting. I, fire size, fireworks man size hole. Yeah. Here's the thing, because the fireworks blow man-sized holes in walls in Madam Web, I know that I'm right and that it's a bad idea. Because if it's in Madam Web, it's, it's probably wrong. It's a bad idea, wrong. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen if Finn had explosives. It would just be a different series, honestly. Yeah, like, no, I think that Ruin would win. I think the whole story would just be fundamentally different in a way that it's hard to... I would just have to rewrite the books. You know, it would, it would just be fundamentally... And maybe that's what Alloy of Law is, right? Maybe they have explosives there, and so the world is fundamentally different. Hmm. Sometimes those questions... There there are questions like that where you're like, what if you introduce this thing that when it we introduced it into human society, it drastically changed everything about the way that we live? Yeah. It's hard to so like be like, like... how much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> how many books can I write? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you know the the, the advent of explosion uh, of explosives and our ability to control them drastically changed so much about human history, right? Yeah. It, even just like how we get around North America, the ability to blow holes in mountains and build roads allowed us to expand further yeah. west, and yeah. th there's so many elements like that that. I don't like upgrading my crossbowmen to Gatling guns because then I can only shoot one tile instead of two, and that drastically changes the game for me. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you don't want to upgrade until you hit artillery. Uh, well, no, no, that's a different unit entirely. Oh, is it? Yeah, you've got your siege unit, so you get you like your trebuchet, and then you get like there's like cannon and then artillery. What's that next level above Gatling gun? Um, I like, welcome to Civ Talk, uh, <laughs> our new podcast. I, I I don't know because I always just stick with artillery, and then I usually stop like playing the game in the last like yeah quarter. <laughs> Um, Talcamar Althor says, how many fireworks would she need to blow a hole to escape the final cache in Fadrex? Uh, she would die. It would collapse on her before. You know what, Talcamar Althor? <laughs> here's what I want you to do. No, it wouldn't collapse. It wouldn't break the stone at all. Go into a cave and shoot off a firework and see what fucking happens to you. Mythbusters, let's go. You would, she's dead. Because the firework isn't going to fucking do anything to solid rock. It's gonna blow up in her face no, and she's just, gonna die. It's gonna shake the like dirt and no, like, it debris isn't. around. It's not. Fireworks are not explosives. I mean, they're, like, they're, they're that's, I, mean, I take it back. They're slightly explosive. It's gonna shake loose some, you know, If you shale. shoot a firework in a cave of solid rock, mm -hmm. you are going to do fucking nothing. We should try this. We should, we should test this theory. Y'all. Y'all. Fireworks are dangerous to people because we're fleshy. We're fleshy little <laughs> soft boys. Kenny Geology, thank you for that super duper chat. I must take a long rest. I find your podcast quite satisfactory. High praise from a Vulcan live long and prosper. Thank you for being here. Go sleep. I hope you enjoy. Go recover all your hit points. The art of Ponfar. <laughs> God damn it. Judah, thank you for that super chat. Mistborn game with similar fight flight mechanics to Spider Man. Oh, with the pulling, pushing metal buildings would be sick as heck. Oh, a thousand Yeah, we, yeah. I, we talked about that, actually. Um, the I think problem, that would be very fun. The problem, honestly, with setting a game in this world is how do you... I, unless you're just playing Vin's story, I, I guess. My, my thing was, like, how do you create a story where there are enemies to fight? But if you do Vin's story, 
that, then there's definitely a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you could do, like, a, like, yeah, I know, it's tough. I think you would have to set it after. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, it would take. I, some, I would need uh, time. I would need time to come up with what the plot of that game would be. But I want the I want the mechanics because it, it would be very fun. Oh, a hundred percent. I would play yeah. the shit out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Michael Kiewski says this is why every time you fire a cannon, the gunpowder blows a hole in the side of the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cardillo uh, says fireworks under pressure become boobs. Yeah, sure. That I, think, I think you meant bombs. What is the auto predict text on your phone? No, doing? it's boobs. It's definitely boobs. <laughs> definitely boobs. Uh, Pilks asks, and how quickly would? Oh, oh, there was a okay. Pilks put a question, and uh, Kamala Thor got one like in between. Pilks wants to know how quickly Ellen would take away and hide the explosives. No, they they were continuing each other's question. The fireworks or the explosives? I'm pretty sure... They mean this, Yeah, but Pilch replied to Talcumar Thor. Oh, 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 oh. I see, I see. I, it makes sense to me now. Um, Immediately. 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 Yeah, Ellen, Ellen, Ellen would, Ellen would hide that shit better than the Lord Ruler hid his adium stash. <laughs> uh, De Generoso, Maximum Velocipi, says, How many letters did Ellen write to Vin, and why was it only one? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> there was only one letter in Mistborn. And it's the letter at the very end. Mm-hmm. No, there were many letters no, in Mistborn. No, I know, but, I know, I know. But they were written in steel because Ruin could change them. So is it a letter if you write it in metal? I don't see why it wouldn't be. Why wouldn't it be? What do you think the definition of the word letter is? I don't know. I just always associate a letter with like paper. Fair. Like, I, you can't say I wrote a letter in steel because you have to, like, scratch it. You can't write it. <laughs> Checks out. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I won't expand on this any further. <laughs> no, I will be taking no more questions at this time. Thank you for book club. <laughs> Farewell. It's not writing, it's scratching, so it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, very different. It's not a letter, guys. Yeah. Ellen wrote no letters. It's engraving. You, you you have to engrave it, so. Oh, man. M-Dash says, if you had to change the fate of one of the Mistborn characters, and only one, which would you choose, and how would you change... If you could change their fate, would you? All right, Shrek. <laughs> no, that's brave. <laughs> no, I... I Yeah. It's the Shrek voice that... I, no, that, it's, it's okay. literally the accent from Brave. I, I was it's the quote a, from the trailer, from the movie... Joke. I was making a joke because... If you could change their fate, you only get one. <laughs> one what? If you could change your fate... The, the question, babe. <laughs> um... <laughs> what is happening right now? I... Look, I... One what? I don't know. It's kind of weird because you're like, oh, if Vin and Ellen didn't die, like, that would be, like, happy. But also, like, says it is like, no, nah, like, they're, like, pretty cool where they are. They're taking a break, you mm -hmm. know? Taking some vacation days, so it feels mean to like force either one of them to keep living if they're like happy doing whatever they're doing. Um. But you would pull one of them out of the afterlife. That's your your brain went first when you can only choose one. You're like I want to like, separate no, Vin like and a, Ellen. That seems like a bad idea. Um, I don't know that I would change anyone's fate. I would have had Straff die slower. I would have loved if, like, Tensoon could have survived. He put in a lot of work to try and save everybody. No, I, I don't think Tensoon would want to live in the world as the only Chandra. I feel like that, Maybe. like, an Eternity is the only of your species having, like, is, is, yeah, I honestly... I wish that... that sounds awful. <laughs> I wish that human had become human again. Oh, interesting choice. So he, like, split back into four different people? Well... I wasn't thinking about that. I just mean he kind of, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't know that I would want to change anybody's fate. Clubs or docks, marsh. No, guys, guys, I don't want people, I don't, you, you guys have misunderstood the last two years of me talking about media. 
when people die, stakes. I like it we because like it makes rare. the story real. I <laughs> yeah. don't. I, people dying is good. Seized's journey in I mean, the third like book sad, but... doesn't exist if Tindwell lives. Yeah. It, so I yeah. don't want to change that because the journey through the third book is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is unfortunate, but, like, this, the sacrifices are what gives the story meaning. Yeah, so. pulling a pell. Yeah, Josh Simco, truly uh, pulling a pell. Judah, thank you for that super chat. Do you have any predictions about how the magic system will work in tandem with technology? How will tech evolve? I just feel like it's going to be, like, kind of like Avatar, where they have, like, transit systems that are, like, fueled by alamancers and stuff, and that's, like, their job. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. We haven't watched Korra yet, and I know that there's a huge technological leap between oh, a between Avatar and Korra because okay, it's a okay. hundred years later. But okay. um, yeah, no, I, I I don't know. I think that the, what's up, Fabu? I think the truth about magic is that because everyone doesn't have access to it, technology eventually replaces magic, right? Um, for the majority of other people, I think that you eventually. I think that you get to planes the same way because physics works the way that it works. And like, yes, a misborn can fly, but a plane can fly faster. And so I think that as you move its society Unless forward, it becomes a story of, no, I promise you planes still fly faster. Um, Depends if they're like the little planes or the big planes. Okay. So I think that there is, uh, I, I think that the, the technology, and I think there's an interesting thing in urban fantasy of talking about how technology catches up to magic and how ultimately, like, you know, one of the dumbest things in Harry Potter, in my opinion, is that you get this world where it's like, why, why, would a, why wouldn't you just shoot somebody with a gun? Like, by the time you finish the word Expelliarmus, you're fucking dead. Well, Expelliarmus an AR... isn't going to kill anyone. But an AR-15 can run you through a thousand times by the time you finish that word. Yeah, sure. They shoot 80 bullets <laughs> per, like, millisecond. You know what I mean? But obviously those numbers, I'm I, I'm making shit up. But but you know what I mean? Like, you, you yeah. get to the point where it's like, just, just buy a fucking gun. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? You live in 1996. We have AK-47s. Why are you <laughs> Why are you using oh. fucking wands right now? Um And so like I think that technology just catches up. I do wonder if uh how Brandon Sanderson manages technology as it catches up to magic. Um but yeah. Yeah. Chris Tyron says in England, they can teleport anywhere on the planet at will. Yeah. You think they can't get guns? Guys, they people are like, it's the UK, no guns. They can teleport anywhere on the planet at will. This is a society that can go wherever they want. Yeah. They can apparate they have, and disapparate. I don't know how to explain they this to you. They also have port keys. They like, have magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like... They also have planes. It's 1997. I I was able to get around the fucking world in 1997. They, they, it's not like they're limited. Their their magic their their economy is based on gold. They can go wherever the fuck they want. Yeah, those fucking <laughs> galleons. Oh my god, Ma worth so much in dollars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of, like, what I would change about any of the characters in Mistborn. And, like, I just think that it would change the... St anything would change the story too much in a way that I think would be worse. I truly think that, like, Brandon Sanderson, like... Wait, this is this is something I want to bring up. What? So, um, Judah Kenizera says, There's a problem, though, being that guns are metal and so are bullets, right? You can steel push them. You cannot steel push a bullet. You would die. In mm -hmm. Okay, in order to steel push a bullet... Right? You would have to push against the force. You would have to steel push it before it is shot. Because once that bullet is flying through the air, the amount of force that you would be steel pushing against would rip your body apart. Unless you're burning pewter. E even if you're burning pewter, you are, you are pushing against... Like, the, 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 uh, the amount of, like, physical force that you would be pushing against to push against that bullet would would probably kill a person, right? The, the force generated in a bullet being shot. What if it was being pushed at someone else and you push it to the side? I think that you could possibly deflect a bullet. 
but you could sure. if it was shot straight at you p- having to push against that bullet would be nearly impossible i don't know because i don't n- understand physics fabu says bullets are not steel okay fabu I love, I I so love that you come to book club not having read the book. (laughs) (laughs) It is why we love you, actually. Um... Joseph Ward says the bullet has less mass than you, so you can push on it. That's not... But it depends on the mass plus the momentum, and I don't know what that math works out to be. Uh, So, like, I... Yeah, that's, like, way above my pay grade. The momentum involved in that would be insane Riven X says it's not that much force or bulletproof best would be worth it and it's offset by your much greater mass bulletproof vests are 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 great but when you get shot with a bullet and it hits the vest you still like break a rib <laughs> like can. there's so much force in those bullets that like it's not it's it's not like it would be that easy and also they were talking about a fucking they weren't talking about like a fucking like a, a Remington 700 with scope. Like we're not talking about like the a fucking sniper. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about like if okay. you get shot with like a rifle, you're fucked. Okay, a, I feel if like you're talking a about sniper... like a musket ball. A musket ball, I'm I'll give you. Okay, because right? I was like, but a Remington 700 is like <laughs> I don't know what that gun is. I like literally don't know what that gun is. Um, well, Blue has been shot and did not break a rib, so. <laughs> I, 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 I literally don't know how this works. This is a Remington 700. Looks like a gun. That doesn't give me context. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. Like, I, I think that, that, so, okay. So, here's what I'm, here's what I'm imagining. In my brain, it would work that you would be able to, like, push and deflect or whatever. But what if you had to be familiar with the exact caliber of gun to be able to put the right amount of force into it to not get, like, thrown off balance? Like, I feel like that would be, like, a whole, like, five years of training in and of itself. Uh, Johnny Coleman says, physics major here, work equals force times distance. Time doesn't factor in. Okay, interesting. Uh, Ian Flynn, think think about about Super Chat. chat. Nerdy, I love you, but please think about this. In order to get the momentum, the bullet must push backwards against the firearm, which is being held by a human. So would it... So if you pushed against a bullet, would it then break the person holding the gun's arm? Is that what you mean? No, they're saying that the amount of force that the bullet is moving forward with is not... if, if, If it's an amount of force that's not heavy enough to push over the human being holding the gun, then it wouldn't be an amount of force necessarily to kill a person that it's being shot at. The same force that recoil is being applied to the bullet. Hmm. I have no idea how any of this works. I failed physics, so. That's an interesting thought then. So would you, so so would I just be 100% wrong about this? Well, I, I mean, I definitely don't think it would rip you apart, but I think you would still, like, feel it. I, I guess the real question then, rather than, rather than the, okay, well then I guess the problem would mostly be speed then, right? Like, would you be able to stop it in time? To react. You'd, yeah. yeah. You'd have to have, like... If you push yourself, if you push hard enough to give yourself recoil, you can stop the bullet. Yeah. Am I, am I, 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 okay. I'm willing to concede that I'm wrong here. I am willing. Proud of you. I'm always willing to concede when I'm wrong. No, I know. When, when do I ever like. It's just funny because you seem very reluctant about it. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it seems, it, it doesn't seem right to my brain. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, Probably the easiest thing to do would be to pull it and re- direct it past you. But um, I, 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 I don't know, guys. I failed. Blue physics. Sun says, uh, "Thank you for that super chat." Bullets have as much force as the recoil. It's very little. Coin shots shoot with as mu- with much more force than bullets. Hmm, that's interesting. 
See, that doesn't make sense to my brain, but I, right, it doesn't make but sense. But I don't, I, I don't know how physics works. I think that I am confusing the force <gasps> that the bullet has in the air with the impact force that it has when it impacts the body. Right. Is it just because it like so? Are smaller bullets more effective because it's a smaller surface area? No. 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 Like the momentum. Like if you look is... at like an armor-piercing round, they're they're big. I've held one in my hand. Like the bullets can okay. like bullets can be like thick as a dick. You know what I mean? Thick as a dick. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Michael Kiyosi. I've never fired a gun. I like literally could not. Yeah. D yeah. I have no idea. Um, brakes are at the like forty-five millimeter range oh interesting okay yeah yeah brakes well for so if you're wearing a bulletproof vest oh um like a small like a nine millimeter won't do as much damage but like a 45 millimeter will hmm james ross nerdy uh Clarus, i'll link a mythbusters episode about this in the discord interesting cool thank you james ross and welcome back to the nerd table i appreciate that yeah no i'm like i yeah i think that i'm i think that i'm Mis I think that I'm like trying to extrapolate the force on the human body from the impact force rather than how much momentum it has in the air. Wait, how do bullets accelerate? How do they get faster in the air? They don't. Bullets accelerate very fast over a short time. Yeah, that's in the barrel after the hammer hits the whatever the explosive force is. Oh. But once they're out of the gun, they don't accelerate. They're not getting faster. They are shot out of a cannon right so jim thank you welcome back to the nerd table force equals mass times acceleration you're pushing against the mass not the force i don't understand i don't understand how you could push against the mass without pushing against the force. okay so though. so if you were to if if you were to steel push a moving object yeah. It doesn't matter how fast the object is moving. It only matters how heavy the object is. Is that what you're saying? I don't think that that's the case. I don't think that that makes sense in my brain. I think that, like, if a train is rumbling towards you... <laughs> well, a train's already so heavy. Uh, what, what's the, like, right... Judah, thank you for that super chat as well. My understanding is that steel pushing is your weight plus... Preservation's power manifesting as your natural power levels and elements are acting together. Yeah, like people have stronger pushes. Momentum. Uh, Jess plus if any says momentum is more useful metric than force in this case. But okay, so maybe I'm wrong about this. My understanding is that nerdy wordy science. Lesson. My understanding is that when you have momentum, you're within the realm of like physical calculations your weight functionally changes for the like sake like the momentum changes your mass in terms of the momentum changes your mass like so then do each individual objects have a uh uh what is it maximum like acceleration what is that threshold the yeah terminal velocity terminal velocity so each individual object has its own terminal velocity I believe so, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So wouldn't acceleration affect the weight of the thing that you're trying to push? All right. This has been an interesting conversation, but let's move on. I have no idea. <laughs> the, the best part about this is this wasn't even one of our questions. I don't know how we got here. Well, because we were talking about like uh, explosives. Faith. No, no, we moved on from that conversation. We were talking about the last question we asked was if you had to change the fate of one of our Misma characters, how did we get down this fucking rabbit hole? If you hole? drop a squirrel from an airplane, the squirrel lives. I don't know that that's true. But I don't know that it's because it crashes. I wouldn't the wouldn't the squirrel die in the air? I don't th this this makes no sense to me. All right, let's move on. So, <laughs> just in case you're wondering if Clarus and I are the smartest people on the planet, nope. Incorrect. We have degrees in musical theater. Yeah. Like, you guys could write anything about mass and shit in the chat right now, and I'd be like, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. 
Okay, Chris Pilkington. Wait, this is a good comment. The force is only applied at the impact point. You are applying mass against the mass of the bullet, so it's acceleration force applied by the gunpowder your elements. But, 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 in this case, wouldn't you argue that the impact point of stopping the bullet is when you push your allomancy against it? Right? Wouldn't that be considered the impact point? So wouldn't when you are hitting it with your steel push, the impact point be the mass against your steel push, which is then transferring all of the energy of that steel push of that forward momentum into you? Those are words. This this is why I think the bullets would fuck you up if you tried to steel push them, is because I think that you would actually take the impact of the moment where your steel push pushes against the bullet. What the fuck into is your an body. elastic impact? I am so confused. It's so funny too because I don't think it's actually possible to be fast enough as a human to stop a bullet. If you were so like this conversation is such a waste. By the time the bullet leaves the barrel and you can like stop it with your allomancy, it's too it's probably already too late. You have to be looking at it. Like you would have to be like looking at the bullet or at sorry, at the gun mm -hmm. and the moment it fires or you can burn ATM <clears throat> cuz that slows down time. Babu, thank you for that super <laughs> chat. You have to push with a force equal to the bullets in order to stop it. Stopping it instantaneously would destroy you. Decelerating it over time wouldn't. And I do know that steel pushing is your nerd. <laughs> Guys, Febu has read a book for a book club. <laughs> Chris Bilkin makes up a good point, though. Applied, the, the steel push uh, would apply that force to your whole body. So that would kind of work, right? Oh, yeah. That would totally just disperse it. Stepcat says you could gradually slow it, though, right? I, no, because the bullet's moving so fast. <laughs> That would be, like, you have very You have that difficult, to catch the bullet. Like, you would, you would have to... You would have to catch the bullet with your allomancy faster than I can snap my fingers. Mm -hmm. Unless you're far away. But, like... If you're, like, an allomancer and someone shoots you without you seeing them and you're not burning ATM, like, I mm -hmm. think, like, you're kind of fucked. Uh, Ribbon Hex says, I fully agree. Reaction time would be an issue. I don't... Yeah. I think reaction time is the right way to frame the question. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I don't know if this conversation was interesting right for anyone else, but I found this conversation very interesting. I feel like I learned things. Thank you, chat. I feel smarter, even though I don't understand. No, I feel like I understand. I feel like I, I feel like chat was really able to like walk me through that, and I'm, I appreciate it. I'm I'm happy for you. I'm so glad that a bunch of people smarter than us find us entertaining. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Skeptical Mario says, uh, or asks rather, these symbiotic ash digesting bacteria sure were helpful. If you were introducing a species of symbiotic bacteria into Earth's population, what substance would it digest, and what function would it serve? Plastic. Oh, interesting. Uh, I would. In, I would create an algae that can concentrate the heat in the ocean uh, in a way that we could then extract that heat Into out of the energy? ocean. Uh, no, actually, just oh. to get the heat out of the ocean. Yeah, probably so we could turn it into energy. Because I was going to say like <clears> a <throat> renewable energy source that is just algae. Like they would be like solar panels, yes. but like living. But in a way that uh, part of the big problem with global warming is the fact that the uh, oceans are heating up and yeah. so if we could if i could in if i could create a algae that is either edible or um actually edible would I mean, be great a food aren't there like algaes that are edible yes but i i need an we need an algae specifically to remove heat from the ocean cool because a lot of the heat that's trapped on earth uh through global warming is trapped in our ocean water uh and so many of the world's populations rely on uh, seafood to survive. And if we continue to lose seafood at the rate that we currently are, there is a lot of countries uh, that are just going to functionally not be able to feed their populations without intervention from That's fair. Um, like other places. Uh, and it's only going to make feeding the global population harder. So if we can somehow uh, regulate the sea temperature through either an algae or some sort of like bacteria that could pull that we could use to essentially pull the heat out of the ocean and use that as a renewable resource uh it would be that would be sick uh it would be a huge 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 benefit i would make i would make a a, a bacteria that uh consumes oil and then watch what happens to the world you, you would kill everybody no yeah what do you mean you just wiped out our oil supply our the current trade system that keeps everybody fed globally would stop almost immediately and you I would, would do it out of curiosity you would inflict famine on massive parts of the world 
Like you would kill you would kill billions of people (laughs) within a year. (laughs) You would you would you would be the Lord Ruler. You would literally destroy (laughs) Like I don't I don't think you understand how bad a system you would functionally create overnight. No, that's why I want want to do it to see what happens. There are large swaths of Africa that (laughs) almost entered a complete famine because we couldn't get grain out of the Ukraine and you want to make it impossible to move grain globally. I said no, I said oil. Not grain. No, no, no. How how do you move the grain, Claris? How do you get it places? I don't think you understand. With caravans, <laughs> obviously. Running on what? Well, with horses. <laughs> Across the water? You want to put, you want what? You want Kelpies to fucking swim People fucking grain to before we North had Africa? Oil? I Jesus like civilization. Christ. I, you, I, you don't need oil to, to make yes. a frigate. Yes, you do. No, you just need that for the, um, uh, the, once you enter that era. Do you, do you do you understand how many people would die within Just six make months? Make a lot of caravels, you know. I literally was like, I would like to create a renewable energy source that helps limit the dangers <laughs> and destruction of global warming. And you're like, I want to remove oil and watch as everybody suffers and dies. <laughs> okay, to be fair, my very first answer was plastic, which is my real answer. But while you were speaking, I was trying to think of something funny. <laughs> And I think I, I think I did that. I just want the world to fucking burn. <laughs> Dancy, thank you for that. Oh my god! Super chat. Oh Typhanus. man. Typhanus, guys, I know that there were boats before oil. I don't think you understand how much shit we need to move nowadays in order to keep eight billion people alive. Yes. Like yes. I don't no, think right. you understand just how detrimental that. Like. Guys, when we had boats, well, and that's the thing is, moved... I don't understand. So I need, I need, like, um, I need, like, to 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 see it for myself. We you know? we have boats now, ships that can move twenty eight thousand storage containers at a time. You're not moving that on a caravan on a fucking sail ship. You're just not. <laughs> it depends if the wind's really good. Here's the thing, if you had allomancy to direct Jesus the wind, Christ. useful. Very useful. <laughs> Solves the problem of both fossil fuels and overpopulation. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, if, if you want to just wipe out the population. I don't think people understand how many problems that would lead to, but, you know. As long as we have enough people to keep running the nuclear power plants, we'll... How are you? Some people will survive. How are you? Okay, so I have a question for you. How are you powering the systems at those nuclear power plants in the case of emergencies? Solar. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and definitely wind. not gas generators. No, it's solar and wind and a heat algae. Well, just ground all planes. I'm sure that our society wouldn't devolve into like true despicable anarchy without the ability to get around. Well, but the internet stays around. No, it so... doesn't. No, it really doesn't. The internet goes away. Why? Everything goes. Every... Anything goes. You, If you got rid of oil, within a year, our entire global economy collapses to the point where almost everybody's dead. Okay, so then here is my question. What happens when we run out of oil? Because oil takes a really long time to make. Um. Oh, we're fucked. Okay. So I'm just speeding up the process, is what you're saying. No, we're hoping that we're we're hoping that there's enough oil in the ground to get us to a point where our technology moves beyond it. We're just not there yet. Okay, so where are the solar boats then? Where are the boats with the solar sails? We're trying to figure it out. Why don't I have a treasure planet boat? Because yet? they're not efficient enough yet. And so it it we also, in order to run them, we need batteries that are made from metals that we currently are mining unsustainably. So like even electricity, even electrical motors are a huge problem because we can't pull enough cobalt out of the ground. And the places where we are pulling cobalt out of the ground, there's a bunch of fucking kids being forced to do it and it's not great. I know, but this is very fun watching you freak out. I'm just- Thank you for indulging me. I, I like, it's because people always come up with these like, oh, what if we just, and I'm like, I don't think you understand how like oh, deeply no. complicated the systems that oh, are no. interlacing to I create. I understood exactly what I was doing when I said that. Okay. Um, But my real answer would, yes, be plastic. Although I like your, your heat algae idea. 
Um, we just, we, I don't, like, people don't understand how close we are to, like, real, real dangerous levels of famine in countries that rely on seafood. Yep. Um, who needs coral reefs? Who oh, needs coral reefs? Oh, wait. We do. Wait, 10 million crabs died off the coast of Alaska last year because it was too hot in the water? That's not going to be a problem ever. That's so sad no, for them. No, it's fine. So sad for them. Um, Linus, thank you for <laughs> that super chat. Since a single car has the power of hundreds of horses, how would we breed all the horses <laughs> for the caravans? Well, so what you do is you take a male horse and you take a leather you put sheet. put a sleeve on it. And you just jack that horse off. Yeah. You gather that cum in a glass jar. It would jar. be so much more expensive than it already is. Oh, yeah. Horse cum is yeah. already very expensive. Very we expensive. would end up with, we'll obviously be using Attack on Titan Well, horses. yeah, you, ha you have to use horses that, like, work <laughs> like cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it always comes back around. We should finish Attack on Titan at some point. No, um, I'm good. You're not going to watch the end of it? Uh, you know what? I'm going to watch final episodes without you then. Yeah, I think I like, Should I, I think put that I know on my where channel? it's going. No. Should I react to it no. on my channel? No. For the love of God and for the sanity of our mods? <laughs> no. Uh, Christ. Oh, wow. Um, <sighs> Pilk says, if you had the power of deity and had to remove, transform a significant percentage of the world population for story reasons, which would it be? <laughs> Transformers percentage of, oh for sure oh, how do I answer oh. this question without getting cancelled as a white man um you get rid of all the white men uh, that's that's your only answer that you're allowed to have what would I get rid of bald people the fuck well because it just seems very arbitrary <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> I was trying to come up with something that wasn't, like, a race. So what, you just want to get rid of people with alopecia? That seems cruel. Well, you know, it's not, like, the most common thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all, I don't know why, where this energy is coming from today. <laughs> I would just get rid of I feel like I'm just troll answering. Just no, plastic, everyone over 75. <laughs> plastic was a real answer. I think that... that Bacteria eating plastic would actually be very beneficial um, um, for society. Uh, random, dispassionate, fair. Sure, yeah. Um, no, it could, oh you don't God. have to, like, you don't have to remove. It says, uh, the question can, it says transform them. So, interesting. Oh, I've got a good one. Pedophiles. I would get rid of, I would get rid of the ability for your brain. No, no, no. I wouldn't like, I would, because, because the, the Lord ruler mm -hmm. was able to like make people different in yeah. ways, right? Yeah. I would remove pedophilia. Yeah. You just drive a spike through them and suddenly no, they are no, attracted no. to, to of age people. No, literally like the way that he made the skull like more fertile or whatever. Oh, sure. I sure, mean, sure, and sure, not sure. with heme allergy. I mean, literally like I would make it so that you, that human beings do not develop pedophilia. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what? That is great. I think um, it's one of the, it's one of those things that has weirdly followed me around my whole life. Uh, and I just think I, I would real, like, I real. would get, I would get rid of it. I, as, you know. Yeah. Just like make it like not possible. Yeah. Yeah. Not follow me around in that like it's something that I have. It, um, the, I, I was a part of a number of organizations as a child mm -hmm. performer that were later found out to have pedophiles working at them. Um, and thankfully, those people are in prison now. But j j it's just one of those things that, like, has weirdly been around my life. Um, yeah. And it's something that I would get rid of. Yeah. I mean, Sweet and Savory says it moves the ability to want to harm, but the problem is we saw what happened in the Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't take away the... I wouldn't, I wouldn't take away the desire for harm. I, I think... I, I understand that harm sucks, but I also think that... It's too broad an idea, and sometimes yeah. harm is necessary, uh, and that that's an unfortunate truth. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a that is a weird, complicated question. Yeah. Um, um, almost thought nerdy was part of the clergy, but then he said the people are in prison. So, well, but I went to Catholic high school, like you know, I I, I have that in my past, but yeah. Um, 
But like, I'm like literally like my name is in a lawsuit and I might get money from the Canadian government, <laughs> not from the Canadian government, but like my name's in a lawsuit about um, a, a pedophile that was a part of an organization that I used to be a part of. Yeah. Um, it's not a secret. Uh, you know, um, I was a young Canadian. It's that all of the shit's out there. So I don't feel like I'm like revealing some crazy shit. But no, no. no. I, I might get money from the Calgary Stampede over it, you know? Yeah. And so it's like one of those weird things where I, it's just something I would get rid of. It's, it's, it's harmed too many people that I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Code 76 says, make sexual reproduction not a pleasurable experience. So you're just saying get rid of orgasms? No, Code. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Get rid of orgasms. No. no, 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 no. 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 Babu Moose, thank you for that super chat. I want trees to feel pain. I don't need them to scream or anything. I just want to know that they're indeed feeling pain. And I thought I was unhinged today. Okay, we're moving on God from damn it. this. Uh, well, no, I love that the, You like... would get rid of bald people and I would get rid of pedophilia. <laughs> Paradigm Flux says, if this gets deleted, I get it. No hard feelings. I don't know how to ask a question without it being a discussion. I'm sorry. I am literally of two minds on the idea of the possibility of a creator. Being bipolar, I am both a nihilist who sees everything and uh, as absolutely meaningless and a spiritualist who finds meaning in absolutely everything. That is quite a sentence. Everywhere, all at once, depending on whether I'm in my depressed state or my manic state. As I've gotten older, I become somewhat of an amalgamation of the two. However, knowing that I'm bipolar, I doubt everything I believe. So my question is simply wanting to open up a dialogue. Do you believe in the possibility of some sort of existence in a deity or a super consciousness that created the universe? Or do we live in an apathetic reality where nothing matters or perhaps something in between? Well, goddamn. Um, um, well, no, I... No, let me be able to reread oh, that okay. if I need to. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I, here's, here's my stance on deities. I think that they exist. Um, I think that there is... I think that there are larger things in the universe than we can possibly understand. I also think that they do not care if you masturbate. I don't think they care if you kill somebody. I don't think their son ever came down to try and tell us to be better people while also saying that slaves should obey their masters. I don't believe that there is a higher power that could possibly give a shit about the morality of individual human beings because on the timeline that a greater deity would live on, the individual morality of individual people would be such a non non-issue that the idea that a god would choose a ruler for a moment in human society is beyond preposterous i think the idea that a god cares about the day-to-day -day about any individual person is so narcissistic and ego-filled and it is one of the biggest flaws in humanity that has allowed for so much of the harm that we were early talking about removing from society. Mm -hmm. There simply is not a way for there to be a deity who gives a shit and for the world to function in the way that it does. Um, I think that if you think that God created a endless universe that expands with the potential of everything and that they care if a penis touches another penis in the bedroom that you are living in a bubble manufactured to make you pliable to the society and the laws that you live under mm -hmm. and not living in a reality where there is a deity. I am a spiritual person. I believe that things happen for a reason. I think that when I die, the energy that makes up my being will return to everything around it and that we are all connected in the experiment that is the ever-expanding universe. But I do not think that there is any greater being who cares about the minutia of my life from moment to moment. Because yeah. that, to me, would be so... I, I would genuinely question how that person is all-powerful if they could care on such a minute scale. Oh, yeah. Um, I, 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 I agree. I, I mean, they're, you know... We have very similar, I think, views on... Um, life and religion and like big like topics like this I think that if a deity of some kind exists mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is in it is in the way that um, the Minoa tree exists in Aragon mm -hmm. where it is it is a consciousness that is semi aware of the world and its existence mm -hmm. and like like assisting almost the 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 flow of life but is not aware of individual events that happen of individual people of like um of of like you said the like nitty-gritty minutia of yeah. people and their their everyday activities i think that that is like 
Yeah, I think that that is arrogant beyond belief. That yeah. there is some big guy up there who is like picking favorites, or it, or is like, yeah. you know what? You're kind. You're strong. It's fine. I'm gonna fuck up your life and see how you handle it. Yeah. Because I think you can handle. Like like that is that is beyond bonkers to me. Um, but like. Yeah. I, no, I, I agree. I think that I think. There's definitely no possibility of a god in that sense. But the possibility of there being a almost like larger semi-sentience, I don't think you could be sentient in the way that we are and take in everything on the scale of like the universe. But like I said, having a like almost like muted consciousness that just has like a light awareness over things, it, it is possible. Um, do I think I, do I believe in that? Mm, I, not really, not really. I, I, but yeah, God, that's such a like big question. I don't know if anything matters. Oh no, no on, on our human scale, no. Like genuinely, and I, I don't know, I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> uh, Johnny Coleman, thank you for that super chat. God is a cat, created humans to serve their chosen. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny, for that super chat. It's probably true. It's probably um, true. Yeah. Like, I, I I believe that everything happens for a reason, but I don't think that we, like, serve a greater purpose. Like, I don't think that there is some big plan. I don't think that, like, the choices that I make are going to, like, affect, like, an afterlife of some kind or whatever it is. I hope when I'm dead, I am dead. Like, yeah. I, like, that, that, that is it. And maybe that will change as I get older. I know that a lot of people have said, oh, they, they get close to death and they just, you know, they're not done yet. But uh, my goal is just to do as much as I can in my life that makes me happy and that brings joy to the people around me because it's fleeting and it won't matter when we're all dead in 100, 200 years. So. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I struggle so much with, with even talking about religion because, there, we, we, we've created a society where we're like, oh, well, you have to respect people's beliefs. And I, I, I agree with that. Like, I do. I mm -hmm. don't want to disrespect other people's beliefs. But also sometimes when people are telling me what they believe, I'm like, wow, you, you sound insane. Like, you sound, you know, and, and, and mostly because of the, the harm that people are willing to tolerate if, as long as it For comes from beliefs. their community. Yeah. But they won't tolerate any harm from another religion. And I, I just... I The hip hypocrisy yeah. is one of those things I can't get my head around. Yeah. Because I'm like, how how have you convinced yourself that this is okay and this is not? When mm -hmm. it's, it is like glaringly right in front of you. Um, I like what um, Freeha said. Um, hi, Freeha. I like the idea that nothing matters and therefore everything matters. Yeah. And I think that both of those things, yeah, they, they can exist at the same time. Um, but, but I think it's also like why we strive so hard in our life to enjoy our life, right? Why yeah. we work so hard to make our life something that we get up and do every day that, that fulfills us. Because I don't think there's anything after. I think that living is what I get. This life is what I get. And yeah. so I have pursued, I've spent my whole life pursuing the time that I want to be spending because I know, like, I don't get anything else. There, there's, I, I'm not, I'm not, I am not living morally. I think I live re very morally, right? I treat people well. I don't take advantage of people. I am very, I'm an upfront and honest person. Mm -hmm. I have fucked up a lot of relationships. I've been a piece of shit in the past. I, I'm not saying I'm a perfect person, but I think that on the arc of my life, I would argue that I am a very moral person. Mm -hmm. And I've never cheated in a relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I try and do right by people. I don't do that because I think that I'm going to be treated better in my afterlife. I yeah, do that because yeah, yeah. I want my life right now to feel like something that I'm proud of. Yeah. I want right now to be able to wake up and look at myself in the mirror. I, I'm never endeavoring to live a life for something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what makes me so sad about people who I see doing these doing these activities in their life for the idea of an afterlife mm -hmm. that don't seem to actively make them happy in the position they're in, right? I, I don't see them feeling fulfilled outside of the idea that, oh, I'm not going to hell, so this was worth it. And I'm like, but if hell doesn't exist, then was it? Like, 
if you live your whole life for a future that you will never experience, what about the moment? What, yeah. what about here, right? Yeah. Like, what, what what are you giving to yourself every day to make yourself happy? Yeah. And, you know, I, I know people who are in marriages that they fucking hate that they won't get divorced because God will be mad at them. Yeah. And I'm like, that's fucking insane. Yeah. Like, it's insane to me to be in an abusive marriage but, well, if I get divorced, then I'm going to hell. And I'm like, I I don't know how to... Yeah. I don't know how to... Re- I don't know how to respect your beliefs in that situation. Mm-hmm. And I try. I'm not saying that I don't. I just don't know how to. Because I look at that and I'm like... I, I don't I, I don't know how to interact with you at yeah. that point, right? When, when you are so God-serving that you're willing to live in misery Mm -hmm. because of this idea that in the afterlife you will be rewarded for it. I I, I personally don't know. And it's why I don't have a lot of deeply religious friends, right? Because I have a lot of very spiritual friends. There's a lot of, there's a lot of mysticism in my life, Mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of that like strict following of a religious code in my life because uh, in a lot of ways, I, I don't know how to interact with it. Yeah. Because I so deeply don't, uh, subscribe to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I think that you should treat people well because it is so worth it to treat people well today. Mm-hmm. Fuck the afterlife. Yeah. And if yeah. God, if I die and God looks at my life and is like, you know what, you were a good person. You treated your wife really well. But you well. didn't pray to me. So. You donated money to charities. Yeah. You gave time to charity. You did all this stuff, but you didn't believe in me the whole time. You're going to hell. Fuck that God. Yeah, I don't want to be a part of that at all. You know what I mean? Like, if 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 God has this opinion that you could live your life and be a good person, not all the time, but as much as you can, and at the end of it, what matters is whether or not you went to church on Sunday mornings. Like, there's a lot of people who go to church at Sunday mornings and then go home and beat their wife. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. There, there, it can't be about that. Yeah. And if there is a deity and it is about the believing in them, then they're a narcissistic, ego-filled monster and mm-hmm. I don't want their heaven. Put me in hell. I'll go hang out with all the people I'll who hang out with the queers. don't fit in yeah. to that ideology of, well, but you have to believe in me yeah. because it's all about me. I'm yeah. just a fucking... Like, at that point, you're believing in a monster. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, uh, sorry. I, and I feel like that's mean and, and people are going to be upset with me for saying that, but... I, I think that if you were, if your God is just a, a human ego made manifest in the sky, then you have more problems than I do. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I like this, like, I, I like that, um, the way that Paradigm Flux brought up their question, because it feels to me a lot like, um, Sazed gets these like two powers and, 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 um, on one hand you can like, you can kind of see them as everything matters and nothing matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, as ruin and preservation. Um, and so I, I think that like, I think, you know, I think that in a lot of ways that we, we would all be better off if we were all a little more like Sazed. And I know he is very religious and very spiritual, but that idea of like, of both, mm-hmm. both, everything matters and nothing matters. And like, that's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? One of my th- favorite things about Greek mythology <clears throat> is that the gods all kind of suck. And they are, because the, the gods in Greek mythology really represent the forces of the world, right? Yeah. And they are things that as human beings, we tolerate and that we um, get through. Mm-hmm. Storms off of the ocean. Oh, Zeus is mad at us. Zeus is a horny kind of evil fuck. And we all just kind of have to put up with his existence. Yeah. And I think that that is, that is, that is, that is more what a god would be if they were narcissistic enough to believe that you need to worship them in order to, for, to live a moral life, right? Yep. Zeus, Zeus, the, fucking Russell Crowe's Zeus in uh, the Thor movie is more akin to what I think an ego-filled god would be, which is why I don't believe in that. I believe that there are deities yeah. who just don't care whether we live or die. Yeah. Because they existed before the Big Bang and they will exist after the heat death of the universe and there will be something else. There was something before the Big Bang and there will be something after this universe is gone. I'm not going to be a part of it, but I get today. And today's pretty fucking awesome because I'm doing book club with a bunch of people that I care about. I have a wife that I love. I'm going to play D&D tomorrow. My life is good. And I'm enjoying it and I'm putting effort into the enjoyment of it. Yeah. And I don't need a religion to do that. And I don't need a religion to be a good person. Mm-hmm. I just don't. And like some people really do. Like well, some people tell like, on themselves and they're like, well, if I didn't have God, I'd be a bad person. And I'm like, then you are a bad person. Well, and those things don't have to matter on the scale of like, of things must matter, right? Like, 
you know, the, like, we do live in a reality where nothing matters, but, like, this matters to us right now. Yeah. It's not going to matter, you know, when, when we're dead, but, like, who cares? I had a moment. Um, Code 76, uh, I, I want to bring up a super chat before I say this. Uh, gods so like Ruin and Preservation were limited, controlled by specific motivational characteristics. If you could be a god, which characteristic would you choose to be limited to? Oh my god, wait, I, that's a bigger thing. We'll come back to that in one second. I want to make this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I had to take a semester off my sophomore year of college. Um, uh, the, the girl that I had fallen in love with my freshman year had cheated on me over the summer. Mm -hmm. And we'd gone back to school and... She was like a senior and I was a sophomore and it was my, I was in that like sophomore slump, right? Um, and I got to the end of my first semester of my sophomore year and I was sitting on the roof of my apartment building uh, and I would hang my feet off of the edge uh, over the street below. And I had this moment where I was looking down and I was like, you know what? It would just be easier if I jumped off right now. And it was the first like, truly like suicidal moment I'd ever had in my life mm -hmm. and I wasn't fully there though but it was like I I, I, it, I rung in me because I was like I've never really really considered it before this moment and so I swung my feet back over the edge and I went down to my apartment and I went to the head of my program the next day and I said hey Amy um I have to take next semester off I might lose my scholarship I don't know. All I know is that I am not okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a position where if I just grind it out, I don't know that I will be able, I, I don't know that I'll make it through the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. But I had a moment last night where I, I know that I'm not okay. And there, there's a, Amy's a difficult figure in the world. Yeah, don't worry about don't, her. Don't, don't worry her. about Yeah, don't, don't Google don't, her. Yeah, um, no, don't worry about but that. But to her credit, she said, I will talk to the, I will talk to the school mm -hmm. and I will make sure that if you are only gone for one semester, that your scholarship is still, I, she's like, I don't know if I can hold your scholarship any longer than one semester, but your, your grades are great. As long as, if you need one semester, I can give that to you and your scholarship will be waiting when you get back. Mm -hmm. And I walked away from my my program in the middle of my sophomore year and I, I went out and I spent six months trying to figure out why I should give a shit about what I was doing and my life mm -hmm. and it took me four it took me four months of actively like looking and, and I, I got a job and I started working and I, st I, I started to like really put the time into getting to the point where mentally I felt like anything was worthwhile. And I, I found that. I, I did. And I, I've, I've, I've never looked back from that moment, right? And I've worked my ass off ever since. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that in the middle of that, I was working like five jobs. I was like on Saturdays, I was selling hummus at Whole Foods. And at Tuesday, like I literally had like the weirdest amalgamation of things in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I... I realized in that time that I was I was depressed, but I still managed to find really fun things to do each day. When I was selling hummus at Whole Foods, I, I wrote these songs that I was singing to get people to come over to my cart and it pissed off the people at Whole Foods and I thought that was hilarious. And I was I was like, oh wait, I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. And so like this meaninglessness that I was struggling with, I was like, why am I why am I worried about that when right now I'm having fun? And, you know, I, I think that in some ways I, I, that thought saved me because I was like, I don't need to worry about next year. I need today to be good. And that is, that, that's kind of the, that is the thought that has kept me going. I didn't find God. I didn't find meaning. In fact, I would say I found I had less meaning, but I walked away from that experience going, I just need to show up today. And... I started to show up today and that led to me having opportunities six months out yeah. where I started to be like, Oh, I have things that I'm excited for again. And it, it, it just started with like, what can I enjoy about this hour of my life? Right. And now that's why we have book club and we have D and D. There are so many content creators that are like, I put out a video on Friday 
and it is a banger video. And we're like, we put out 30 videos a week. We cover every single television show known to mankind. We know, know Dungeons and Dragons. We do book club. We do, you know what I mean? And it's because I'm like, well, I need to enjoy this hour. So what am I doing this hour? Yeah. That fulfills me. Mm -hmm. And what does that create for the future? Mm -hmm. We're doing a big Candela thing in a month that I'm excited to work on. Yeah. And I, I think that there's so much value in showing up to the people around you in the moment and being like, I want to enjoy this hour of my life. Mm -hmm. And I it, it's it saved me from the darkest moment of my life. And I, I don't think that, I, yeah, that, yeah, that's just, that's how I feel about the world. And that's, that's my worldview is like, uh, what am I going to do right now? And, and when you start doing that, I, things open up in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really do. Yeah. I, I, I don't, like, believe in any, like, God, but I do believe that everything happens for a reason and mm -hmm. that, like, that that is how, that is, th that is just how my life has gone. Something happens and, yeah. you know, I don't know why it happens then and then it, it's, it's like some, like, author is literally writing my story and there, and that's the foreshadowing of this moment in the future. Yeah. Like, and, and then that's enough, that's enough for me. Yeah. Let's move on. This That was a long um, aside. We have so many questions left. Um, Oopsie. No, wait. There was a super chat question. Oh, was there? Yeah, I remember code. Oh, what what, um, what characteristics would you chat. be limited to? If I, okay, if I had to be the god of something and I had to limit myself. I would be Dice Christ. And I would, I would be the person who chooses when you get nat 20s and nat 1s. You'd be the god of chance. I would, I would, I would, I would be the god, but only specifically TTRPGs. I don't want, I don't want to be anywhere near a casino, but I would, I would, I would bless the tables mm -hmm. of people. The goddess of tangents. <laughs> <laughs> that might be more us. Yeah, honestly. No, no, no. I love that. Dice Christ. Yeah. Um, that is fantastic. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, what do I like enough to, to have my whole life be centered around? <laughs> That's tough. Um, um, Think about them. I'll, because this question is kind of related to the deity thing. Uh, and if there is a deity, are they worthy of worship? No, don't worship people. No. Worship your partner, and that's about it. Johnny Coleman says orgasms. Thank you for that super chat. Goddess of orgasms. That just seems exhausting. I know. There's so many people in the world that are fucking like that. Just that really seems exhausting. I don't know if I could keep up. Josh Tipko says, I'm he who goes off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Steve, thank you for that super, super duper chat. chat. Holy shit. I hadn't picked up a novel in years. Glad I did for this. Great series. Great combo. Thank you for being here. I'm yeah. I'm glad that you got to read Miss Bourne because I, I do think these books are phenomenal. Um, So, wow. Thank you. That is very generous. Um, I would be the. Can I just be the goddess of boobies? Like, just yeah. design boobies as a living. <laughs> design them. Yeah. Sure. Clarice is the goddess of boobies. Yeah. Or Babu. Thank you for that super chat. Uh, imagine Babu, you can pick up you. any domain to be the god of, and you don't pick ska. Ska. Like, He's talking about the music. Oh. What about jizz? What? Jizz. The jizz god. The jizz music. I am the jizz lord. The jizz, yeah. Oh, jizz music. Yeah. Well, you said music and I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm the god of jizz music. All right. Team Rocket says... Uh, Team Rocket 07 says, uh, One of the criticisms of the series is a lack of female characters. However, do you think the absolute badassery of Vin makes up for this? Uh, not completely, but definitely a little bit. I think that Vin yeah. being so prominent a character it helps. Yeah, it definitely uh, feels a little bit better balanced because she is so much the the like you know obviously like says it is the hero of ages, but like Vin is the main character. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I I do truly believe that. Um, I yeah, I don't know, like you said, if it one hundred percent makes up for it. I also think there's but. a lot of other great female characters. Uh, it's not. A, I would love more main characters, but like I, I think Shanna Lariel was a great character. Yeah. I think what was the other? Alrian is a good character. Alrian. Tindwell. Uh, Tindwell and um, who was the fucking um? Cliss. 
Cliss. Yeah. So I yeah I think Kat there, Dennings. Cat Dennings. I think there were I think there are good. Fem- I think the female characters that are there are good. I just would have liked more of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, and how their other question is how do you rate the character development and overall arc of Vin's story from the girl who joined the crew to the Empress assassin? I mean, massive, right? I think the yeah. the difference in Vin's arc is I think the best arc in the series. I don't know that she's my favorite character. What? She's holding your hand. Oh okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I don't know that she's my favorite character, but she might be. I, I do think that her arc is incredible, though. Yeah. I think the changes that she goes through and the way in which she responds to them is fantastic. I love so much that she doesn't become jaded in the end. And mm-hmm. that, like, it really is a story about her opening up. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that, like, part of the problem with Zane in the middle book is that she is trying so hard to be more trusting that she overdoes it. But even in realizing that she overdid it with Zane, she doesn't like clam up for the first half of the next book. And I also think that like, she just has the most incredible strength of will. Cause yeah. at one point she realizes that everything she's done is because of ruin. Yeah. You know, she thinks that like, she has like autonomy in a way that like, isn't necessarily a hundred the case and like that that is that is really tough to come to terms with and yeah. she just keeps fucking going anyways you know i think that that's like that just says so much about her yeah and i love that quality in a protagonist and i i yeah i yeah i i think she's so well written do you think about super chat vin versus raid shadow legends Oh my god. Not a sponsor of this stream. Thank you, Judah. No. Previous sponsor of the channel, Raid Shadow Legends. James Lady asks... Oh. I would actually... I would love... I would love a, like, Raid Shadow Legends style Mistborn game. Oh. Something simple I can play oh. on my phone. Just hang out with Vin. No. Um, what do you think happened when Ellen burnt Duralamin with ATM? <gasps> no, they should add Vin as a playable character in Marvel Contest of Champions. Anyway, uh, Shims Lady, uh, when Ellen burnt Duralman and ATM. I don't really know. I think that it just meant his ATM was better than Marsh's ATM. Yeah, I uh, that is one thing that like I am genuinely not sure. I. I think that he saw far enough in the future that he knew everything was going to be okay. Hmm. And that's why he went... And that's why he took that hit that killed him. Is I think that he saw far enough that it allowed him the moment of realizing that he... That he was going to die, but it was going to be okay. Huh. Interesting. At least that's what I want to believe. I love that. I didn't even really think about like that far. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. All right. Maybe he burnt it so hard that he saw what the afterlife was like and was like, "I'm okay with He's that." He's like, "I, you know what? I can, I can accept that. I can accept that." Yeah. Um. He was like, "The only, the only way to win is to sheathe the sword." <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Do you want me to give you the answer? Wait, there's an answer. Doesn't he just say like, "I see" or something? What's the actual answer, James Ross? Is this like a, like... Is it a spoiler for future books? Or is it like something that Brandy Sandy said after? Because if it's a wob, I'm down to hear it. Um, a wob? Yeah, word of Brandon. Oh, oh. I don't know. He, like, posts on his blog or some shit. Okay. Um, while James Ross types that out, Kyrian asks, uh, do you have any general predictions for Era 2 that you want to share? I think you know that we don't really know anything. So I, I feel like yeah. it's... I feel like I, I'm excited to find out. I don't really have much thought about what it is. Yeah, I like like genuinely I have nothing to go off of. So I don't <laughs> He know. saw the entire story of Cradle and y'all reading it and enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, James, I'm sure if you if you wanna share that, if it doesn't come up in other books, like, let's go. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have any general predictions really. I'm I'm just excited to read it. I'm actually kind of like I, I you know, I, I don't understand why we're not reading that next. And there's a part of me that kind of wants to just go straight to that, but I trust the mods and the conversations you guys are having behind closed doors about what order we should read the books in. Yeah, I know everyone has an opinion on, like, kind of what order it goes in, and so I think if we can just keep it simple, whatever the mods... Yeah, I I don't know, though. I I think we're mostly doing publication order, but... I'm just really enjoying... He saw the only way to win and get Vin to let go was to get rid of the only thing that was keeping her alive. 
Oh, okay. So it's so similar to what I was saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because then yeah, Vin has that moment after. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm yeah, I'm I I, I like that. I it, like I said, like he saw that it was gonna be okay, and right, because he's like Vin, let me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Uh, Judah Kanziria Kanazaris, thank you for that super chat. Wobs are questions he answers on stream slash cons. I love that. But if it if so if Brandon Wobs. And no one's there to record it. Does it? Is it a real log? Is it real? Because that 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 opens up some risk. Like I could be like, yeah, I had a conversation with him, and this is what he said. And yeah, I'd be <laughs> like, it's a wob. You gotta believe me. I'm sure someone's tried that. I'm the sign on. Asks what connections, if any, do you expect to see between Miss Marnara One and Elantris? Given they both, I fuck, dude, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really understand what the Cosmere is. Like this question yeah. is something that I have no fucking. Genuinely clue. have no idea. Because I expect zero connections. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could not tell you. If the copper mine people don't record it, it is regarded as suspicious. <laughs> Fair. That's what your cell phone is. Yeah. I, I don't really expect there to be any connections, but there might be. Mm -hmm. Josh Timko asks, what are some strengths Brandon Sanderson has as an author that you've noticed so far compared to other authors you've read? Uh, definitely like intentionality in world building. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it everything feels like well plotted out beforehand. Um, you know, he has a very strong idea of how his world works, how the story is going to go, and how all the little intricacies are going to tie into one another. Yeah. So that the full story is supported in the details. Um, I, I, I think, love that. I I think that there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of POV work that he does that's really strong in mm. terms of. Uh, maintaining the integrity of his characters through different POVs while also allowing us to understand how different people view different people. Uh, I think that sometimes characters in in POV-driven books can get lost in an author trying to say more about the character whose POV it is than the person they're looking at. And so the some of the characters that you never get POVs from in some books can feel like they are just mirrors to look at the main character through. Mm. And I do feel like Brandon Sanderson does a really good job of creating a POV and allowing the, the other character being looked at to maintain their shape while still having those reflective elements on the person who is looking at them. Um, I, I think that that's a tough skill. I think it's something that's not always done in Wheel of Time, particularly when it comes to looking at the female characters through the male lens. But I think that it's something that Brandon writes really well. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I also love that, like, he's not afraid to put in a magic system and then, like, fuck around with it. Yeah. In a way that makes sense, right? It never breaks anything, but he, he, he like, goes balls to the wall, like, how he did with Andrel and the, the yeah. gateways and stuff. Like, he, he, he loves taking things and turning it on their head, and I love that. Sezed standing on top of the grate in the Terrace homeland and fighting using the powers that are stored in the metal beneath his feet was yeah. one of my favorite fucking fights yeah. because of the creativity involved in writing that, right? Yeah, for and sure. And, like, oh, Sezed can't move now because he, you know using the magic system to lock Sezed into figuring out how to fight a different way was really, really fun. Yeah. And I think he does that so well. Josh also asks, what are some shortcomings or weak points of Brandon Sanderson's books that you hope to see improve as you gradually read newer books of his? I mean, that stuff, I don't really, I don't need him to get better. <laughs> no, like, I think, it, like... like if, he, if, if, if all of his books had the quality of these three books, I would be happy to keep reading his books. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, yeah, I think definitely, They're not perfect, like, but... you know, some more female characters yes, yeah, would, yeah. would be nice. But, um... Yeah. I, I like his prose. I like how he gives out information. I yeah. like how he sees people. I, I like... How he shows his point of view. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. People are like, oh my gosh, guys, they get better. And I'm literally, I'm sitting here like, how? Like. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that this, uh, these books couldn't have been better in some ways. They, they could have, right? I'm saying that like. Probably. I, that's not my. On a forte. technical level, the quality of this book is high enough that. I don't need it to get better to want to continue reading his prose. Sure, yeah. Right? Like, when you talk about, like, what do you want an author to get better at, when I'm having a great time, it's I, I don't care that it's not perfect because I... The, here's my here's my problem with the way, this way of thinking, right? Is that what it leads to is the idea that there is a point that you can never get better from. That there is a, like, perfect. Mm. And I just don't think in a subjective 
I, in a subjective medium like writing, I don't think there is perfect, and I don't think that there is... Yeah, you can have math that is correct. Yeah, you but can't you can't have, have a correct book. Yeah, like that's... You can have stuff that works better for some people or more than others. You can have, like, bad art, obviously, yeah. or, like you, like, you can... There is, like... It's weird, because there is, in some ways, a wrong way to do it, but there's not, like, the right way. Well, and I think that that's what's so tough about talking about anything, right? About like, art, and yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been covering the Alabasta saga on my One Piece reactions, mm -hmm. and I actively think that... I actively think that Alabasta is not good. Like, I think that it isn't... I think that it is just not good media. I think it's bad storytelling. I think uh, there's so many issues that I have with it. And other people in my comments fucking love it. And I'm not wrong and they're not wrong because it, it, there isn't like a correct way to do this, right? I also think that like previous arcs in One Piece are nearly perfect. And other people think that they're the weaker arcs in One Piece. Yeah. I'm not wrong. They're not wrong. It, it is the tough thing about this media. It is also the tough thing about our show is us giving our opinions. And I state my opinions declaratively because I'm trying to create a show, right? I'm trying to make this entertaining. And yeah. There's elements that go into putting your opinions on the internet makes it seem like you're stating facts rather yes. than declaring your opinions, which is what I'm doing. I'm declaring my opinion. I think one, I think Attack on Titan is an actively bad show, right? I think that it is, and that's my opinion. Other people think it is the greatest story ever told. It's Neither of us are wrong. Yeah, it's the problem of like, of like you don't want to have to keep saying... In my opinion, yeah, I yeah. think this. Like, you know, I People's, I would. But I, I, I'll, I'll take it one step further. Yeah. People scroll when you say, "In my opinion." That is true. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we. That is also true. We are in it. We are in a society mm -hmm. where people want to hang on to your words. Yes. When they all matter, but yes. when you start to make statements, literally, social media coaches and all of those people will say, "Just take out all of that stuff. Just say how you feel as a fact." Because that is how we consume things now. Yes. And I just, it, it is really tough. Yeah. It's why when people are like, you're wrong about this. I'm like, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. You're, but I'm also not saying that you're wrong. <laughs> my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And I think like having to, I think having to always like qu quanti qualify, I guess is me, uh, whatever word you want to use, but always uh, almost like, um, Hmm. They talk about this uh, in the way that uh, men and women speak, actually, um, of the like, oh, well, you know, I think it's my opinion and mm -hmm. where like um, it, probably less so nowadays, but like um, historically, like men are like, this is fact because I believe in it. Um, yeah. I think that we all need to be better as humans as have, if someone says something and they're like. Th th this is what is true for me that we can accept that it is true for them and it is not true for us yeah. right like like people that are like you know uh s like the sequels are bad like i think that they are not good and you think that they are good like there are things that like like the good outweighs the bad for you and the bad outweighs the good for me and so we be mm -hmm. come to a net negative or positive yeah, yeah but like we can agree on the things that we think are not done as well or done better right yeah, like it's like, just how much they impact your enjoyment of the story it, yes yeah. and so when when you are talking about stuff like art you have to take that into account and i am really like in a lot of ways so tired of people being like no this is objectively like this mm -hmm. or bad or whatever like like quantifier you want to put on it and yeah. i think that we like i try throughout like something like our book club to seed in that you know this is how we feel and if you feel differently that like, that is okay mm -hmm. but to constantly be doing that is exhausting and i think that like as a society i wish that we were just more all on the same page in that sense oh cool you think you think that way about this thing cool not well no you're wrong to think to 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 believe that like i just it drives me up a fucking wall. well it it goes back to wheel of time the, there was a point in that conversation there was an episode of the wheel of time book club where i said that if you st if you tell me that wheel of time is your favorite fantasy series ever uh -huh. that that is a red flag to me and people were like oh so you think that people who think wheel of time is their favorite 
is makes them bad people. And I was like, no, red flags no. don't mean that. It, it means that something goes up in the back of my brain where I need to get to know you better. Yeah. Because either it's your favorite because you love Elaine or because there's there's things about it that you love. Or, or you, like... you think that like the slavery is handled well. Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, there yeah, were yeah. so many, in our early wheel of time there's days. There's different reasons to love a thing. Yeah, yes. Yeah, in, yeah. in our early wheel of time days, there were so it's the same reason why if you tell me that Attack on Titan is your favorite anime. It's a red flag. Yeah. Not because I think that you're inherently a bad person. No. But because there's a chance that you think that Aaron was right. <laughs> right? Because people do. And and like that. And, and so a red flag doesn't mean that everything about you is wrong. It just means yeah. that there's a thing that goes up in the back of my head that means I need to investigate you further before I'm willing to commit to a relationship with you. Because yeah. I need to know why it's your favorite thing. Yes. Because there are a lot of people who are... If you're like, oh, it's my favorite because I love Hanj, like... So, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this, I love this, like, specific character, like, these reasons for it. I'd be like, cool, okay, I can, like, breathe easy. But, yeah, if you yeah. if your favorite thing about a thing is the reason why it, it may or is problematic, like, mm. Yeah, and, and th that comes from our comments being in the first, like, if, until most of the, like, right-wing lunatics had left our comment sections, were people in our comments actively being like, guys, no, every society needs a slavery system to survive. And yeah, I would be like, yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. They're like, no, Robert Jordan just gets it. Slavery is a part of the human condition. And I'm like, that's an insane, that is an insane re reason to love these books. Yeah. And if you love them because like Moraine is an incredible female character, I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm, uh, that, that, that. Like, red flags are things that like tick up but they can also be ticked down by a follow-up sentence right sure yeah i think <laughs> john smith is a perfect example mm -hmm. i love dune because paul is the hero red yeah. flag red flag red fucking flag. red flag if you if you're like fucking i believe in the lisan al gaib i'm like that's concerning yeah if you yeah, love yeah. dune because of the way that it deconstructs the idea of white saviorism then i'm like oh we're probably on the same page yes so like but but people took what I said in the red flag as meaning that all people who like Wheel of Time are bad people. Right. And I was like, that's not what I said at all. Yeah. There's just a bunch of you that suck, and I only want to be with the ones who don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fabu, I'm so sorry. The, the slavery tier list was the most, like... Yeah, cringe, the slavery awful. tier list was really weird. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. But also, there are so many people online who attack me for having opinions that I think are the most sane opinions ever. I know. Like, I, you know, because I've been watching a lot of anime, and there's a lot of peeping Tom jokes in anime that I don't like, because I think being a peeping Tom is a fucking weird choice. Uh, I, I don't think that you should creep on women. But apparently... That's a hot take. Apparently, I'm wrong. Yeah. And that peeping toms are just so innocent and it's funny, so stop fucking caring about it. And I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand those people. I don't know how to get on board with people who are like, no, no, I like the peeping Tom jokes because I want the female characters in my media to be uncomfortable with the men around them. And that to me is just like an insane, I don't, I just don't get it. Yeah. And like there's a, the, uh, my, my reaction will go up on Monday, but the patrons have already seen it. But in episode 120 of One Piece, sorry for a little bit of a spoiler, there is a dad who peeping Tom's on his own daughter in a bath. And then he gets like the nosebleed, which in anime means horny. And I'm like, what are we like? What are we doing here? Yeah. This is weird. Yeah. He, that's her dad. And I'm so, it throws off the whole reaction because I'm like. If it was the other kids, if it's the other boys peeping on the girls, I'd be like, okay, like, it's an anime thing. I can get past it. But it's her father. And I'm like, it threw me off so much that it's her dad yeah. peeping on his own kid. And then someone in the Patreon comments was like, well, Oda has said that, like, he was being protective and not, like, peeping on her. And I'm like, that's not how the scene comes across. You're just trying to soften something that is, in my opinion, objectively bad, but that I can't say objectively bad because other people don't think it's that bad. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah, that, yeah. That's Judah, so fucking weird. Judah, thank you for that super chat. Thank you so much. People criticize Sando for his prose not being as flowery as others. After mm -hmm. reading the series, how do you feel about his and other authors' prose? I don't need every author's prose to be the same. And so no. I like the... Here, and I actually... Here's the thing. I want to credit Brandon Sanderson for 
um, going for clarity over flowery language because I felt like I was never lost yeah. in the middle of like action sequences or explanations. I appreciated that it was a little more cut and dry than, for example, like the Lord of the Rings. Like I like uh, the Lord of the Rings. They're not actually my favorite books. I mean, they're I, among mine, but I, they are among mine. But they are not my favorite because, like, I think that sometimes it's a struggle. If I want to read poetry, like I'll read poetry. If I'm looking for a story, I prefer clarity personally. That and again, mileage may vary. People are gonna want different things from their their books. And that's that is totally fine. I I I yeah I I actually think that is a strength of these for me personally. Uh, I'll agree with Josh Timko though. Uh, what people don't like about the pros sometimes the humor murderous hat trick. Murderous hat trick I did not like particularly because they mentioned four murders and a hat trick is three things. See and I uh, didn't and that, that really but... bugged me, Brandon. It yeah. bugged me because you mentioned four people dying and then you said hat trick and it's just wrong. It's objectively incorrect. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's keep going with these questions. Uh, Red the Windrunner, Windrunner says, you've talked about how you don't like prophecy in books because it's poor foreshadowing of what's going to happen. What are your thoughts of the foreshadowing of the Hero of Ages in the epigraph from the prologue of the Final Empire? Um, the pro oh my god, I don't... I, I really like the way it. that prophecy is handled in these books mm -hmm. because it is a conscious choice of the antagonist to use it to create conflict for the protagonist and like subvert your expectations yeah. of what the story is in a way i almost think it's like a criticism of prophecy in other books right in in the way that i i, I almost feel like brandon sanderson and i might feel the same way about prophecy in that in the way that he uses it in this book is is very clearly using it to actively be a part of the conflict rather than just telling the audience at the beginning of the book how the book is going to end mm -hmm. uh and having the audience just kind of wait for the prophecy to be fulfilled like, my biggest problem with the Harry Potter books is that, essentially, once you hear the prophecy, you're like, oh, okay, so when are they fighting? <laughs> and the yeah. Horcruxes in Harry Potter come up as a way to give Harry Potter a reason to not fight Voldemort. One of, one of look, I, 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 I can talk shit about the Harry Potter books forever, but one of my biggest issues with them is once you introduce the prophecy, Harry never learns a better way of fighting that helps him beat Voldemort in the end. He is just stalled by MacGuffins. So the final fight has to wait until all the MacGuffins are dealt with. And then Harry, who has not become a better wizard in any way, just like beats Voldemort through the power of love, Murph. Um, Harry's just a good person because he was raised by people who hate him. Yeah. And and like functionally, the, the conflict of those books is that Harry already has everything he needs to to beat Voldemort. He just has to deal with the MacGuffins first. And so it just becomes a game of MacGuffin finding. Then I think that J.K. Rowling realized she left too many MacGuffins. And so the final book literally just is how many MacGuffins can we deal with in a 500 pages? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then there's a final fight yeah. um, that happens at the school because. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's really it's really this like situational prophecy that once she introduces the prophecy, she has to just introduce shit to do because the the at the in book one she said that the school is seven years and so there's got to be seven books and so i need to arbitrarily put MacGuffin roadblocks between harry and fighting voldemort because it has to happen at the end of book seven and so the whole thing is just like this the the prophecy literally makes everything else just arbitrary roadblocks to getting to the prophecy that we already know has been foretold in this we get the opposite um we, we, we get that, like, literal moment of, oh, hey, the prophecies are fucking lying to us, and they are the conflict. The, the, our, the villain's ability to impact how we view the prophecy is the conflict that affects the entirety of the plot. And I, I think it's brilliant in that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. By the way, Harry Potter spoilers, I don't fucking care. Don't read Harry Potter. Don't buy Harry Potter. Don't support that woman uh, who is now a Holocaust denier on top of being a transphobe. Fuck her. I, I, I genuinely, uh, I genuinely, genuinely don't. I will spoil Harry Potter for everyone so that nobody ever picks up those books again. Um... <laughs> 
Uh, all right, uh, let's dive into... She's already got me with the uh, Aragon spoilers. It wasn't really a spoiler because we don't, we don't, we can't even spoil the Minoa tree yet because we won't find out until another book. Um, yeah. So let's dive into this next question. Uh, Apollo Jr. says, if you could be a Mistine with any single power, which would it be? I think we've already answered this. I think that I would go Pewter. I think Pewter's, of, of the single powers, I think Pewter's the most useful. Uh, being able to heal uh, and being able to like be stronger when I need to be, I, I just and, and being more graceful. Like I, I think that pewter is a a metal that's easy to get your hands on, and b uh, just uh, by far the most by far the most valuable. If you could have a single ferrochemical power, which would you choose? That's a, that one's tougher because I don't want to give anything up. You you would go pewter as a misting, right? For yeah, it's. Tianai is also Tianai is also not bad, but I think Pewter is just the most useful. I think yeah, I think it is the ability to the heal useful. faster, to probably not get sick, right? Yeah, that's really nice. What ferrochemical power would you choose? Ferrochemical power. Um, um, that is a good question. Can I store up? intelligence mm. can i be like really dumb for a day oh, i know what i would store up sleep yeah but then you have to sleep to store it up or no yeah but if i but that means that i would be able to force myself to fall asleep oh you could literally pick when you're able to be awake and be asleep yeah that yeah you know what that wins i would store up sleep it's yeah. like, that one makes yep, the most yep, sense yeah yeah because then you're not like being like oh, why can't i fall asleep you can just sleep and not sleep when you want to um, if obtaining these powers required a spike, would you accept it, assuming you didn't have to kill anybody? No, I'm good without powers. I don't need superpowers. Um, how big is the spike? Like, if it's like an earring, I'll take it. That's a good point. Here's the thing. Brandon Sanderson says in these books that the placement and the size of the spike matter, but Vin just has an earring, so... But the, the earring doesn't really give her powers. No, it, it does. That's why she's able to pierce copper clouds. Only because she's already misborn, but it isn't enough to give her powers on its own. If she hadn't already been a misborn and she, it wasn't just enhancing her already very strong powers, it, I don't think it, I think that that was the whole thing, right? It was just so that Ruin, it was like the spike that he put in Penrod, where the spike didn't have a lot of power. It was about getting Ruin's voice in Penrod's ear. Huh. And so I think that I, I, I like, here's the thing. He, okay, here's the reality of it. I would. I would accept a spike as long as, like, Ruin didn't exist, right? Sure, yeah. But, like, if you had to put, like, a metal, like, you know, I, I have so many friends that have metal hips, metal joints, who are way too, like, not because they're old, but because they're dancers. So, like, yeah, <laughs> you can put metal in me. I have a lot of friends. Uh, Holly has a fucking metal fucking beam in her fucking collarbone now. She's got plates and screws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, you can put metal in me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. How much do you want to bet someone's spike is a full-on Prince Albert? Hey, if I could t get a Prince Albert to make me better in bed, I would take it. Um, Tart Monkey says, do you have any way too early predictions on how Mistborn or the characters there and might fit into the Cosmere as a whole? Dude, I have no fucking clue. Yeah, I, I know a lot of you have questions about this. And like, that makes me no like idea. excited for the next books. Yeah. But I have no context for it. So I'm kind of yeah. like... Nothing... Here, here's what I'll say to answer that question. Nothing in Mistborn made me think that this was like a universal story or a multiversal story. It was so planet-focused yeah. that unless Seizet is also the god of other planets, I have no fucking clue how this ties in. Yeah. Uh, Dimitro says, now that you finished Mistborn, do you see why it's probably the most recommended modern fantasy book? Yeah, it's such an easy mm -hmm. in. I think it's great for anyone over the age of like 13. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's so... It's easy to follow... A, a thousand percent. The action is very exciting. It yeah. feels cinematic in a way that I think that modern audiences would really like yeah I, I totally get why this is a modern audience thing right yep. a thousand percent if you were trying to get people into fantasy i would recommend misborn yeah whereas like people are like i think you read wheel of time don't don't start with that right i think that like wheel of time was fun especially those first six because i understood what it, it, what it was riffing on and you know all of those things 
I think that this is a great, I think this is a great jumping on point for people who don't read a lot of fantasy but are interested in it. Yeah. Also has a female protagonist, not a lot of other female characters, but I think that like for young girls who want to get into fantasy, I think there's a lot of good to see in Vin. Yeah. Like there are other series that I might recommend to like specific people based on their thoughts and feelings, but in a general recommendation, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean the tough, the tough thing about recommending it is Brandon Sanderson's connection to the Mormon church. Which, you know, I, I think that even as we're covering this stuff, I, I don't know how I feel about it fully. Like, I, I think my biggest issue yeah. with Brandon Sanderson is that he tithes to the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like like I said earlier, like, uh, it's not up to me to, like, dictate other people's beliefs. And uh, his personal beliefs, I, I, I agree with enough that I am not, like, very put off by him. But, um, you know, I, I do... I, I, I have my I have I have my own problems with the way the Mormon Church hoards its wealth. Um, yeah. So that part of it, that's kind of the only complicated thing about him. But yeah, which is you know uh, I think I think again like mileage may vary as to whether like how you feel about that. Um, I uh, Judah Canzarius, thank, thank, thank you for that super chat. Super chat. <laughs> Mistborn, Castlevania or Arcane style animation? I have not watched that Castlevania animated show yet, so Me I don't either. know. But I would definitely go Arcane right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I need to watch that Arcane show or that Castlevania show because I've heard it's really good. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Troll Chaos says, but they built. They got to build the Nauvoo. That's yeah. That's why they need all the money. <laughs> I just think that if you're a religious organization who's tax exempt, you shouldn't be allowed to hoard wealth. But well, I don't think. To be fair, I also don't think anyone should be allowed to hoard wealth. I don't think anyone yeah. should be. I like. I, I think that I. I feel the same way about Apple's whatever eighty three billion dollars they have in the bank that I do about Brandon Sanderson's or uh, uh, the, Mormon the Mormon Church's Church. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. stock portfolio being valued as much as it is. The same way that I feel about the the uh, the British monarchy and the way they hoard wealth, right? I think that I, I think that hoarding wealth is honestly so much of the issue with the inequality that we see in the world. Yeah. And the all of these organizations have enough money to end poverty. And in the Mormon Church's um, mission statement, they should be doing everything they can to end poverty. And instead, they sit on a giant trust fund that they're not spending, bringing an end to the world's ills. And like, yep. It's frustrating because I feel like I am not a religious person who does not have a moral or like obligation to God to take care of other people. And I spend more of my money percentage wise trying to help other people and more of my time trying to help other people than the fucking Mormon church does. Yeah. And they just fucking sit on it for who knows what. Did you see that? Drives me crazy. Did you see that the, the, the palace wanted to hire a PR person mm -hmm. uh, full time? Can you guess what was the full-time salary? 80,000 pounds. It was the equivalent in U.S. dollars of 36K a year. <laughs> yeah. Fucking billionaires, man. Yeah. Fucking yeah. billionaires. Doing PR for the, the royal fam. Night Nightmare. Fucking nightmare job. Um, Orchid Eater, uh, welcome back to the nerd table. Have you guys seen that Brando is inspired by inspired by a combination of how Thakandar blades are made in Wheel of Time and Fane's nailing the fade to the door? Oh, how interesting. Fun. That's a fun idea. Yeah. That is no, miss that completely, but I do love that. Yeah. Thirty six thousand yeah. dollars. That's crazy. Yes. Y'all, I not not to like not to brag. But I make dumb videos on the internet for myself. And I make <laughs> more, more than, than $36,000 $36, a Here's year. Here's the other thing. You also have to live, like, in London, which is the, One of the most expensive cities in the world. as fuck. Like, I... Yeah. Yeah. I was literally like, what person... In what world could you afford in, that? In what world? And they were like, you would have to go along to, like, events and things like that. Like, like you would be like... It was full time. On 36K a year, you wouldn't even be able to afford the wardrobe that they would expect. Nope. No. You to have. You know what I mean? No. PR for the royal family or work at McDonald's. I mean, fuck, man. And people are like, why is everyone turning to OnlyFans? Because the royal, the billionaires are trying to hire a PR person for 36K a year. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Insane. Crazy. Like, if that was like a part time gig for 36 grand a year or something, okay, maybe. 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 Part time. I could, I could, but like, 
I'm sorry, you want me to be full time and travel around with you and do immediate damage control when you fuck up so badly that yeah, anyways, it doesn't matter. Moving on. Uh, and I, I wanna I wanna be clear. Like there depending on where you live, thirty six thousand dollars a year, that's not it, it, I'm not saying I'm not I I, I don't want to come across like I'm saying like that is a bad amount of money to make. For London? It isn't, it isn't a bad amount of money to make. If you make less than thirty six thousand dollars a year and you're like and you feel like your job is taking care of you for the area that you live in, that is awesome. Sure, yes, right? yes. My issue with it is that the royal family are billionaires and that that job they need so desperately for someone who's actually good at it because they're so bad at it. Yeah. They somehow manage to fumble what should have been a huge win for the monarchy, right? They, and I, I know that this is going to sound gross, but you have to think about the way that the monarchy thinks. Yep. Not the way that I think. Yeah. They should have taken Kate's cancer diagnosis, made it very public, and garnered an infinite amount of sympathy yep. from the public yep. who feel bad about the fact that she has cancer. Yeah. Because from a PR perspective, yep. there is no better way to stop people talking shit about you for a little bit than saying, hey, this woman has cancer. Yeah, yeah, It yeah, makes yeah, the public yeah. go, oh my God, we feel so bad for you. Yeah. Suddenly... Oh, and it's like the commoner princess. There's all of these people who are like, oh, right, royal family. We're not going to talk shit about you right now. They managed to fumble that announcement so bad that you had people cheering for the fact that they thought the king had died on St. Patrick's Day and that Kate and Will were getting a divorce because he got another woman pregnant. Like, that's how bad at PR they are when they took what should have been a PR victory... A sad one because there's a cancer yeah, diagnosis yeah, involved. Yeah. But from a PR standpoint, a victory for the royal family, getting people to not talk shit about them for probably 48 hours. And they turned it into a week of them fucking up so a bad. A fucking circus. Like so, and like the PR disaster that was the excitement that I felt thinking that King Charles had died on St. Patty's Day because that would have been just the best. Uh, please die next year on St. Patty's Day, King Charles, or tomorrow. I'm happy either way. Um... <laughs> So, like, they, they bungled yeah. it so bad, and now they want to offer what is not a livable salary in London. I know. It just isn't. Like, I know. I literally, like, my jaw dropped when I saw that. Um, It was shocking. Um, Also, I'm so sorry, Embrice, that you had to find out here. Uh, <laughs> and I want to be very clear. I am not trying to make light of the fact that Kate has cancer. No, it's awful. It's That's just terrible. It's just crazy that they, like... That, yeah, that yeah. this is how it turned out. But I'm just saying, from a PR standpoint, it should have been an easy dunk to be like, we are making an announcement. It is cancer. The whole royal family is standing behind Kate. We are all being very supportive of one another. And instead, they put out a weird fucking photo. I know, I know, I know. That caused, like, the worst possible rumors. Yeah. All right, here we go. Embrace, I, I feel you. Uh, Syrian says, describe the Lord Ruler more in terms of goals and successes, failures, rather than good, evil framework. What was the purpose of the final empire and did it accomplish its goal? Uh, I do not think that it is ever appropriate to ascribe success to somebody without the moral framework of who they've harmed. I think that that is how people like Elon Musk are given a free pass for the amount of harm that they've done. Uh, Bill Gates for the amount of harm that he's done. Uh, Steve Jobs for the amount of harm that he's done. If your success is built off of exploitation, I can't consider that a success. You cannot become a billionaire. Billionaire. A billionaire. You cannot become a billionaire without exploiting the population, the, the rest of humanity. If I ever become a billionaire, I hope that you come and burn my mansion down and you string me up in the town square for failing every other living person on this planet by becoming a billionaire. I think that if you become a billionaire in any way, shape, or form, given our current, obviously, if money, at some point, inflation will get to the point where everybody's a billionaire because a billion will be, you know. But based on the current value of money and the way in which the amount of labor you have to extract out of a civil uh, a population to become a billionaire, I, I do not believe that you can be a good person. I think the Lord Ruler even if he thought he was being a good person, was not. Yeah. Uh, and there was no success. He created slavery for a thousand years. That is a failure. Yeah. And I think that, honestly, it, it was the final empire was a failure in its goal because the Lord Ruler was like, oh, I'm going to protect people from ruin. But, ru like, ruin... He didn't. He, di he didn't yeah, do yeah. that? So, so, no, I think it was a failure. Even ruin went, like, what's a thousand years to me? Yeah. 
I still got to bring misery. I still destroyed the hearts of man. Yeah. If you look at, if you really think about it, like the fact that the Ska were so beaten down by the time Vin came along, then you, you have to look at it within the context of ruin did ruin society. L- look at the inequality that existed between the nobles and the Ska. That is ruinous to the morality of man. Yes, like Ska were murdered daily. Yeah. If they got, if they were too old, they ruin, had a sick day. Ruin was like, winning the whole yeah, time. Ru- so, ruin yeah, he failed. was winning. Yeah. Um, it, was an, it was an utter failure on every level. Yeah. That Cezad, and the, the biggest failure is that Cezad had to do un- undo everything that he did. Yeah. In order to balance the world. Yeah. He had to undo every single element of the Lord Ruler's rule. Yeah. And that is... I, I don't know. I think that it Except was just I failure. Except I guess Allomancy. The Lord Ruler didn't create Allomancy. That existed... That predated the Lord Ruler. He didn't create it. The, the It just... We didn't know about it? No, it was the body preservation that created Allomancy. Not the Lord Ruler. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Syrian says, how responsible is Zorashek for his own actions? That I don't know. That is... A thousand years of ruins influence, I, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I think that definitely the Lord Ruler got worse, but he didn't start off as being good because he's the one who made the Ska. Um, yeah. You know, like, like, the, like, yeah. I don't think, I, you know, I think if, like, good person is up here, Rashik, like, started here and just kind of was on a steady decline through Ruin's influence. Judah Kanazar says, would you play a homebrewed Mistborn Affair Chemist class for D&D, or alternative, would you play the Mistborn Adventure game? I would rather play the Mist. I would rather play the game that's built for Mistborn. I think it's tough to homebrew that yeah. in, um, unless you, like, made, like... Yeah, I don't know. I I would ra- I would rather play because th- there's there's a n- there is a Mistborn TTRPG already, right? I would rather play the game. It's not sold anymore. That's Aww. weird. How much you want to bet it gets republished when uh, the animation or the live action should comes we, out? Should we should we should we make a Mistborn? It's got to exist TTRPG? somewhere though. No, it's got to exist somewhere. Yeah. But I would play. I would. Ha- I would fucking love to do a Mistborn campaign. I think it would be so fun. I think. I think this world is ripe for a campaign. Something that explores more dominances, travels the wild a little bit. Like I think, you know, how does a Mistborn fight in the middle of nowhere is such a fun concept. I, yeah, I love the idea of like, yeah, like D and D with like, like as like a coin shot. Yeah. No Mistborn. All Mistings. Right. So everybody in your party has, like, a has different a specific, part to play? Yes, yes, yes. And you could have a big bad be, like, a Mistborn or something. Yeah. Right? The evil character. Yeah, that'd yeah, be Yeah, I think that would be really, really cool. But you would have a combination of... You could even have... Hmm. Could if, you morally, like, have a good party if one of your party was, like, uh, was practiced hemallergy? Like, they, like, killed I, bad people to take their powers. I think that if you don't, if the party is unaware at the beginning of the campaign that they are being influenced by Ruin, I think that it is the same thing as having a Warlock patron. Cool, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think that, I, I don't see a difference between being a, pa- having, being a Warlock with your patron being a devil. Yeah? Morally. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I fucking love this idea now. Uh, apparently, they're remaking the Mistborn TTRPG because they weren't happy with the previous one. Guys, our goal is to run new systems as they come out. Um, we're doing that with Daggerheart right now. N- next up will be probably um, MCDM. Well, we've got Candela coming. We're doing Candela next month. We hit our like charity goal. Um, but that's been out for like a year. I mean, like moving yeah. forward, I want to be a uh, roleplay relay to be a channel that tries new TTRPGs, especially when they're in beta test. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if that launches, I promise you, we will be doing it day one. Yeah, that would be really fucking cool. Yeah. Someone go ask Brandy if he can send us a, some some proto, some beta stuff. Uh, and their final question was, uh, imagine the Lord Ruler survived to take Preservation's power when it returned to the well. What would they have done with it? Would they have recommitted to the Final Empire model or would they have tried something different? Would he be more skilled at handling the power his second time around? I think that without a thousand years of ruins control, maybe, but yes. I think that he's too. I think he's too far gone. Yeah, he's too fucked. Yeah, because it took what a, a thousand years. Like yeah. somehow, somehow Vin killed him in the sweet spot of the power wasn't all there yet, so he couldn't use it. But then it was three years later, and the power was there. Three, one year. Sorry, one year later. Yeah. That three hundred and sixty-five days was crucial. Three hundred and sixty-five days. 
Yeah, um, which I find funny, but it works. Uh, Daylight asks, how hands-on of a deity do you think Seized will be going into Era 2, considering he has the power of both ruin and preservation? I think Seized, being the one who studies religions, is going to be fairly hands-off. I don't think he can be very hands-on. I think that if he could, he would have talked to Lestabornis and not left him a book. I think his ability to touch the world will be very limited. I think he was probably just busy with Tinduil. Just fucking bending her over a metaphysical rail and just going to town on that pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm going to leave a note because I have Do you think that as a do. god, Seizet gave himself his penis back? Why not? Oh my god. Yeah. He was castrated as a kid, right? Yeah. What do you think that first orgasm was like for him? Oh, it's fast. Like, because he's never even, like, He gave himself off. a dick and just goes, like, Wah! <laughs> he, like, touches it with one finger, and it's just, like, fucking... Tingle looks at him, and he's like, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna take some practice for him, but... He also has the power of preservation, so he could probably just hold it in as long as he needed to. Uh, Early Ann says, if you could add one book character to your D&D party, who would it be? Tensoon. I think having Tensoon with the party would be really fun. Um... Hey, okay, for the chaos, Marsh, because it's like, it's like, but before like Ruin is released. Oh God. So is it like, is it Marsh being controlled or yeah, is yeah. it Marsh, Marsh? Like that, that, that would be like you want, terrifying. You want the big bad to be with the party. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I know I like Tensoon because I like the idea of having to like kill people to steal bones for him to like shape change into what we need for the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going in and like killing a guard and then dragging their body out so that that Tensoon can like dress up as that guard and go into the I think there's that something would be, fun there. Yeah. It's like a way better disguise self. It takes longer, but yeah. it's worth it. Um I yeah. Uh Relic Hunter says says it spent decades collecting religions and realized in the end they all had truth. Isn't it ironic that all the things we, we read that says that uses from these religions that help him save the world are actually scientific facts and not religi religious doctrines or ideas? Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. What messages do you think from says that's religious roller coaster? And what message do you think Sanderson was trying to convey? I don't think that the things that I, I disagree with your assertion here. I don't think that there it was that the religions were full of scientific truth. I think that the religions were full of a lot of things. And among those were some truths that Seiza was able to pull out. But those weren't the only things in those religions, right? I mean, yeah, but it is the things that come up the entire time. Like, they're all, like, relevant. They've been there through the story. So it's like, yeah, these religions have other things about them, but, like, we don't learn about that. Uh, but but what I'm, my point is that, like, I think that the religion that had the writings of all the constellations... Yeah. We don't get, but I think exist what that religion thought about each of those constellations, what they meant, how they impacted those people's lives. Yeah, that's what I mean. The story gives us the, like, parts that are relevant from those Yes, religions. that's that's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's, we read that Seized uses these things from the religions. They are from the religions. Like, like here's the thing. Um, I, I, they, they, like, I mean, here's, is making a star chart science, or is that just, like... Using your eyes? Y yeah, but, hmm, huh, hmm. Hmm, interesting. I actually don't know how to dive into that one. Mm -hmm. Cause are they? Cause at first, at first glance, I'm like, yeah, they're scientific facts, and then I'm like, well, well, like yeah. it's not like. And Bryce says, "What is science if not observation?" Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Relic Hunter's other question is uh, that uh, Sanderson... Well, we didn't answer what, like, the the message Sanderson was trying to convey in taking those aspects of the religion and making them useful. Um, oh, do, do you have any? What do you have to say about that? I'm just saying we didn't answer it. So okay, if you so have answer, an answer it. it. <laughs> if you have an answer to the question. Um, I think, like, I think w we've talked about how this was, like, a, 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 a book that, like, is something that neither of us could have written because of the perspective that Sanderson has. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was... This is one of the biggest parts of that. Yeah. Is, like, I feel... And maybe, maybe it's not true at all, but it does feel like I have an idea of what Sanderson believes of religion, mm -hmm. including his own, and that, like, his focus is on the tangible 
Um, okay. Which I think is, uh, you know, is different than a lot of religious people that I've spoken to. Yeah, I I don't know that he's trying to convey much other that the other than that there is value in religion, right? And mm. that Sazed finds the value in each religion. I think that Sanderson, in a way, is trying to say that he acknowledges the value in other religions other than Mormonism by doing this, right? And yeah. saying that they all bring something to the table that brings value to the world. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Relic Hunter, uh, their other question was, Sanderson repeated plot lines in these three books. A noble woman sitting in the background who secretly turns out to be an alamancer. Uh, one of the named women dies. Lester Bornis' plot mimics Kelsier's. At least one fake out death. Um, a new power revelation saves the day. In hindsight, does the repetitions bother you? Do you think that Sanderson is a paint by number author? It's like poetry. It rhymes. No, because the they're all different. First of all, and second of all, like Lester Bornis' plot mimicking Kelsier is so deeply emotionally attached to what Lester Bornis wants from the world that like I wouldn't say that that's a repeated plot line. It is, because it isn't the same plot, it is, because uh, Les Morris's plot is nothing like Kelsier's, right? He was not a, na he, he was not this, like, already charming guy who lost his wife and then got superpowers and then became a revolutionary. He was raised in it, and he was looking up to this man, and he was actively trying to be like Kelsier because of what Kelsier went through. And so I, I don't, I understand that there is, like, some repetition in that, but the repetition was intentional on the part of Lester Bornis. Right? Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't call that paint by numbers because of that. Yeah, no, I think, I don't think, I don't think paint by numbers is the right, like, way. I, yeah, I don't think that's the right way to describe it. There, there are definitely, like, um, literary tropes and, like, devices yeah. that, like, tell a good story, which is why we continue to use them. But I think that the, the symmetry throughout the series is very intentional yeah. and not a paint by numbers. This worked this time. So I'm going to do the same thing the next time. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't, I would say it's very paint by numbers. I, I thought that the way it was all tied up in the third book really showed that the, the, the entire series was very thought out and yeah. not just him trying to subscribe to like a, I also don't really think that it, while, while there is definitely a hero's journey in this series, I don't think that it follows the hero's journey but after Kelsier's death, I don't think it perfectly follows a hero's journey in the way that um, things like Star Wars do. Yeah. Uh, Dimitrios says, uh, do you believe that Brandon Sanderson allows his personal beliefs, biases, or specific viewpoints, such as religions or politics, to influence his writing? Yes, everyone does. Everyone does. I think that it is literally impossible to divorce yourself from your from who you are as a person yeah. to be able to create art. And the people who claim the hardest that they do completely divorce themselves from the writing are usually the most wrong about that. Yeah. 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 I, th yeah, I, d I genuinely don't think that's possible. Yeah. And I think that it is a positive when someone brings their own unique perspective of the world to their art. But it also is like, did the, it led to us being like, is piercing kind of a sin in Mormonism mm -hmm. because of the way that he treats hemallergy and like being pierced by metal. And it is. So like, you know, there are elements of that. Uh, but do his influence uh, have a positive or negative impact on his work? Positive, always, because you aren't a person without your experiences. So yeah. you literally can't have any creative writing without being a person, which is why AI art is bullshit. It's not art and yeah. it's not intelligent. So and it is just artificial. It's not creative. No. It's art. It's just not a creative art. It is a bland, mm -hmm. meaningless art. Uh, Kano. At that point, is it art because is it influenced by a person, a human's experience of the world? Yes, because it's it because it, it, all art is influenced by previous art, right? The difference is that there's no cre there's but nothing you, created in it. It is not a, it is not new art. It is just, just regurgitated. If you just take every color, you make brown. There is no experience. Well, no, you make white. Once but... you really, yeah. if you have every spectrum of color, it's white. Then how would you add black to a palette and get white out of it? Because black absorbs all. Black black is the antithesis of white. But you can't mix black and white paint together and get white. No, because black doesn't reflect anything. Okay. I don't know what that means. My my point is that because AI is just taking from... Sorry, I have that just, backwards. If you add all paints together, you get black. 
because you don't get brown, you get black because it won't, it, there will be no spectrum of light that's reflected. Okay. My point is that you can't have any depth or variation to it because it is just an amalgamation of everything, which is meaningless and nothing and therefore not art. Yeah, it's still art. It's just not creative art. It's it's just, it is just, I argue it's that meaningless it's not art. art. Uh, but art in the, in the sense that it is technically like, by, by stealing from other art, it is technically a recreation of art. Much in the same way that like, I, I think that, you can be a very talented paint restorer, but you haven't created anything. You've just maintained something. Yeah, I don't know. I still think that that is artistic. I think that like it is that it is like that person's like personal experience and technique that therefore the art shines through. I I, I think I that don't know. I but but I wouldn't create. But I would I would say that they're a very talented artist, but they are not a creative artist because they're not creating anything. They are maintaining somebody else's creative vision. I would give them more credit than that. I'm not saying that those are the same thing, but I'm saying that like there are a lot, there's a lot of art that I don't think is very creative. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Samantha, thank you for that super chat. Congrats on getting through Mistborn. This trilogy is by far my least favorite in the Cosmere. <gasps> so the fact that you liked it so much is a good omen of things to come. Can't wait for Stormlight. I can't either. Everyone's like, it gets better from here. And I'm, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so excited for it. Thank you for that super chat. Um... <laughs> what Kano says, what do you think of the leather bounds? Do you have any? Don't know what that is. The books. There are, I believe, leather bound versions of these books. But uh, no, we, no, we, I've never, I haven't seen them. I, we don't own any. We've never actually bought a Brandon Sanderson book. Yeah, these were sent to us by Blue, right? Was it Blue? Fuck, this was in like. Blue at least sent us the other one. He sent us the, the blue and the red. What are those called? The... He sent us that and he sent us the Way, Way of Kings. Blue, did you send us these books? Somebody sent us these books. Because I also know Kenny sent us some books as well. Kenny did send us some. No, it wasn't you. Okay, so I think... Maybe it was Kenny. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, we've actually, like, we have not bought... <laughs> we haven't bought one yet. We have to buy Elantris. We don't have a copy of Elantris. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to have to get Elantris for, for... Oh, we're reading Elantris for next week, so be on it. Yes. You, yeah, you yeah, sent the... Yeah, the Ben Galley books. Right. Okay. Um, Kano says, finishing the Hero of Ages is one of the most memorable endings to a book I've ever had. How does this compare to other book series endings for you? It's pretty high. Oh, yeah. It is what I wanted. I don't, yeah. I, I, um. I'm really, really, really Lord happy Bolt sent it. Warbreaker. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I knew that it was a different, I thought it was a different person who sent the trilogy versus, um, Warbreaker. I was like, is it, wait, okay. I don't remember. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, so maybe it was Kenny who sent us these. Maybe. Um, I'm so sorry. I feel really bad now. But um, I think it has one of the best endings. It was satisfying in so many ways. It made me cry. It made me, like, I, I felt like, um, I felt like I had a new perspective uh, after reading it. Like, it did all the things that I wanted the ending to do. So very, very high. Um... Yeah, uh, Early Anne says, uh, I don't really get the magic of the Coloss. Like, they keep growing after they're made, but I don't really get why they grow. Do you have any theories? Magic. Yeah, I think we talked about that the other day. Mm, yeah, I think that I think, I think think that it is that they are, like, four people in one. And so the... the or they're five people in one. And so the, the potential of those four people fills that one body until it pops. Because they, they there's, like, a tight... There's an... There is like a like human potential that is being driven into them through the four spikes and that just seeps into them and makes them continue to grow endlessly until they explode. Jeez, that's dark. Yeah. I am Vithan. Thank you for that super chat. With that conversation about art, I think you guys are going to love Emperor's Soul. Don't is know what that is. Is that a Cosmere book? Maybe. Uh, Early Ann says, on a scale of 1 to 10, how Thank would you, you rate the Apocalypse and Mistborn compared to other series? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a actual apocalypse. So I appreciate that. I really hate when books are like, it's the end of the world. And I'm like, nah, you guys, are, you're going to be fine. A, a lot of people are going to die, but it's not really an apocalypse. This is an actual apocalypse. Yeah. Like a lot of zombie apocalypses aren't really apocalypses. Like they shouldn't be successful. I don't know why they are. <laughs> but this is like, I get why this was successful. Okay. 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 Emperor's soul is in three weeks. Great. Love that cool. for us. Oh, we're gonna have to chat with the mods um, about which which days we're away. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure that our schedule is. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's. It's a genuine apocalypse. It's a it. ten. It's is a ten. It, are we rating it out of danger, out of creativity, out of like death toll? I don't know. It's done well. It's a really good apocalypse in that yeah. it is going to kill everybody, which I appreciate because a lot of apocalypses won't actually kill everybody. So it's like, is it an apocalypse? I don't know. True. Froggy asks, "What did you think? Uh, what do you think talked to Lester Bornis in his coma dream?" Um, his coma dream. Oh, there's a moment after he gets burned, right? He and he doesn't like remember really. I'm gonna assume that because we know an afterlife exists. And that Kelsier exists, that it was actually Kelsier. Okay. Yeah. I think that was my, like, first initial thought, even though I don't actually know. Yeah. I mean, Kelsier is, uh, there is an afterlife, so it could have been Kelsier for sure. Yeah. And especially because it doesn't, like, remember, so it's not that, like, um. Yeah. Vital, I guess. Uh, Lloyd asks, uh, with Seiza being the new god of this world, how involved do you think, oh, wait, we already talked about that. What sort of impact on the world will the events of everyone have on the people religiously? Well, I mean... They're going to mostly have one god because they have a document of him. Yeah. There is kind of like, yeah. If you believe yeah. in something else, people are going to be like, but we have the book and it tells us what happened. Yeah. And 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 like a lot of people lived through it and like ruined straight up talk to them. I do th I do think that there will, no, I think there will be two religions. One for Seizet and one for the leftover like obligators like um, Yeoman, is that his name? But like, why, why would they? Why would they believe in the Lord Ruler at this point? Because he's. He, it is the end of the world, and this dude is like, "Oh, Marsh, right? Yes, thank you, Lord." Like I, I don't know. I think that the Lord Ruler. Hmm, interesting. I, I don't still, think the Lord Ruler will survive this. I, I, I think he's still gonna have an impact because of the people who like believed in him to actually be truthfully a god. Uh, next one is what alimantic fair chemical powers would you like to see more of in Era Two from main characters? Uh, I would like to see more of a mix. I would like to see more people who can do both and see what Brandon Sanderson does with, like... Yes, excited a for that. A... Alomankamferu. Uh, Alomankamferu. Bless you. Yeah, I, I think that there's a lot to play with, with, like, the Lord Ruler. So, I, I don't know. Now that there are, um... Now that you have, kind of, the terrorist people being able to, like, do their thing and the Alamancer's kind of around, I would like to see, uh, you know, a couple hundred years from now, some inbreeding between those people creates people like the original. Yeah. Like like the Lord Ruler. Yeah. Well, at least with his power set, not like him emotionally. No, no, but like how you play around with those, the, how they play off of one another. Yeah, because I feel like the stuff that we had, I feel like we got a lot of, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Uh, Sim, Shims Lady asks, having finished our one, you now have experienced the power of a rigorously outlined series. It was entirely planned out before book one even dropped. In light of this, our outliners, the superior breed of author, and our discovery writers cringe. This is another thing where people are like, what What would you want him to be better? I want every, I want, I want variety, right? I, there isn't a better. Neither option is better. They both styles have created books that I've loved. And so I want, I want people to continue to be them. Yeah. I know that if I ever wrote something, and I, you know, I think before I die, I would, I would like to experiment yeah. with like literature um I, the the problem is i think i would be a discovery writer there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> there's no better so there's i'm just like different no authors. it's fine it's just different yeah I, I just mean i have like a bit of a bias because i know how my brain works um man i'm more of an outliner you know what i mean yeah like i you know the series that i'm working on like i have i, I have the grand plan of it i just don't have the individual words yeah uh, Linus Vikstrom says, now that you've read a Sanderson trilogy, is there anything you hope to see more or less of in the future books? More women! Yes. I would also be down for, I would, I would be down to not have slavery be in the next one. Yeah, don't need it. We, we you know, we, we did probably, it. We, we did, did it. it. We, yeah. we ended slavery. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, compared to the, do you have something else? Sorry. No, no. Was... Compared to the way of time books, do you feel Brandon's writing is stronger, weaker in any way than when he's in, when he's in full control of the story? No, I thought Gathering Storm was also great. Yeah. I just think that, like, the thing that held Brandon back for me in Wheel of Time was that he had to... to... bring it all together with someone else's words. Like, like yeah. the fact that the epilogue was, like, fully written. Yeah. That's that's tough to navigate. And I, I think that the epilogue is the worst part of the Wheel of Time. Um, 
And so... Well, no, I think that um, uh, Crossroads of Twilight is... Yeah, but I got through that and was still able to enjoy stuff after it. The problem with the epilogue in Wheel of Time is that it ru- it, it retroactively the ruined the back half of the series for me. Yeah, I, I agree with um, you there. And so, like, I, I if I just hadn't read the epilogue, I think I would have enjoyed all of Wheel of Time, the ending, a little bit more. Yes. Linus, thank you for 10 gifted <gasps> memberships. Whoa! Oh, my God, so many members who can go watch member videos. But, like, I also think that the... This isn't a spoiler, but I think that the way in which he writes the chapter of The Last Battle... Uh-huh. Is is so impressive, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. At no point was like Brandon Sanderson's a bad author. Yeah. I just don't think the end of that story really worked for me. Whereas I think that pissed me off. But I, it wasn't his writing. Yeah. Um. Wow, Linus. Linus, thank you so much. That's, that's so sweet. Incredible. Really, really, really appreciate Drop you. Drop your favorite emote in the chat for funsies. Uh, and their last question. Um. Now that we, you know the full extent of what the Lord Ruler did to prepare for Ruin's return, would you wanted more of his backstory in the early books, or do you think it might have ruined? The HOA reveals. Yeah, no, I didn't want any more because I feel like if you gave me more, then the hemolurgy stuff wouldn't have felt as revealing in the third yeah, book. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I think Brandon Sanderson really plotted out the reveals well. Yeah. I, I am, I'm with you 100%. I love how information yeah. is revealed throughout this trilogy. I wouldn't want to change that. I, I don't, I, I feel like the Lord, I feel like you, I don't want to make the Lord rule more important because I don't think that's who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pilks asks, how do you feel about crabs? Well, a lot of them died this, this past year, so. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, this, they asked this yesterday. I and the know. mods kept it. Are there crabs in the wheel of, in the, in the, in the fucking Hero of Ages? I don't remember there ever being crabs in this series. Mm-mm. Is, yeah, is this in relation to something else? Is it, do they, it has six, like... Don't worry Don't. about it. All right. Stone Sinew asks, now that the ruins... Wait, no. Is in in Mistborn Era 2, are there going to be, like, ash-digesting crabs instead of, like, bacteria? Um, I'm not a huge fan of crabs. Um, um, I think that with enough butter, they taste good, but it's still not worth the amount of effort it takes to get the meat out of the fucking shell. So yeah, I, for don't, me, I don't eat crabs. I don't. So. I, 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 could, I could do without crabs. Yeah, I'm all right. I don't know. Stone Sinew asks, now that Ruin's corrupting influence is gone, or so we think, do you think that there could be a responsible way for the good guys to use the hemallergic arts going forward in this world? Well, the fact that you have to kill somebody to to, 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 to use them? No? I don't know how people are taking I am kind of ambivalent towards crabs as I am pro-crab genocide. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling crabs is going to be a, a part of the Cosmere verse at some point. I do feel um, like if you took out... Okay, so if you don't have to kill people for hemolurgy, sure. But I still think the murder part makes, cra- it makes crabs. Makes crabs really bad. <laughs> the murder part makes hemolurgy inherently bad, right? Yeah. 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 Although... Yeah. Although what? No, no. I was trying to think if there was an instance where hemolurgy didn't involve murder, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Coleman says, "What was your favorite penetration of the series?" Uh, you know, my my favorite penetration of the series is I think the 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 finding. Uh, the audience discovering that Zane has a spike in him mm-hmm. led to so many interesting ideas and theories because yeah. of the amount of information we had at that time. Very fun penetration reveal. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. My favorite penetration... <laughs> That's tough. I think maybe when um, maybe when Vin penetrates the Lord Ruler with that spear... Fucking kills the guy. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. your favorite uh to follow up that, what's your favorite pull out of the series? Marsh being freed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um The fact that Vin was not pregnant. <laughs> yeah, if she died pregnant, that would have been really sad. Yeah. When oh, I have it. When Ellen pulled his troops out of Fadrex. 
Aww. I think that is the correct answer. Um, how do you feel about liches? I, I, uh, fuck, I don't know. Do you mean like yes. an undead lich from D&D? They're a great villain. I love a lich. Uh, Kamel Althor asks, Sanderson is known for his magic, so much so that his self-named Sanderson's Laws of Magic, which he uses in his creative writing courses at BYU, have begun to be known beyond his own writing. Yeah. Cool. The rules are as follows. An author's ability to solve conflict with magic is directly proportional to how well the reader understands said magic. Yes. 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 Limitations over powers. Yes. Uh, I have always said that. Uh, expand oh, what you already have before you add something new. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, with this being an early work of his, how well do you think Brandon managed to balance these laws and where do you hope to see improvements in later works? Interesting. I don't really want to see much improvement. <laughs> I like those rules. I, I like the way I, I just like the way he handles it between Andrel and the way gates. Yeah. The way I, I, I just I, I'm just a fan of the, what he does here. Um, yeah, the magic system never felt like Attack on Titan. I felt so frustrated by the magic system in that world because it just doesn't make any sense. Whatever the author needed yeah. it to be to fit the there's, situation. Because there's no rules to it. Yeah. Ever. Right. Um, you know, I love how strict this the, the yeah. system is i and i love that there's three branches of it like i i yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know what you could do what you could but the rule I, I like his rules yeah particularly like the um expand what you already have before you add something new i think that more writers need to understand that rule um because that's what leads to issues of the ending of book just feeling like cop-outs because a new power just shows up all of a sudden yes. that's so unrelated. Mm -hmm. and, and you could say like, well, but what about the end of um, Final Empire, right? Vin is suddenly able to absorb the mists. She doesn't get a new power out of that though, right? She just has powers that she already has. She just gets them from a different source, which is like, well then, what? Cause, because the question of the, all the books is what does burning mean really? What does burning metal mean in the sense of... Yeah. And so I think that like, it's the difference between Vin suddenly being able to shoot laser beams out of her hand at the end of the book so that she can win the fight. Yeah. And her getting a new... Um, Perspective on what she already has. Yeah. In terms of the power. Yeah. Yeah. Arzu, this is an interesting super chat. Uh, thank Arzu, you for this. Thank you. Fun fact, he was unhappy with how he wrote the way Vin used the Mist at the End of Final Empire, and this led to him coming up with these rules. See, I get that because I like Vin using the Mist at the End of Final, uh, Final Empire now because, because, of it's the because of the way that it works with the whole yes. series. In the moment, I was kind of like, there's, they're better. If this had been a one book series and there were no follow up books, I wouldn't have liked it. But yeah. I was like, oh, this is a mystery for the future. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And and I it goes back to what we've said about like the audience feeling taken care of. Mm -hmm. Like I because of how information was given to the audience, I never I always felt very taken care of by Brandon Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Like you were like worried about the Orsor stuff uh like m you know morally and like what it said about vin who like made him put on this body and things like that and i was like no i believe that brandon sanderson has a plan like mm -hmm. i think that it is intentional and not just uses a willy-nilly device and then drops like i think that everything is so meticulous um and i i i, I so appreciate that in authors because if i feel taken care of as an audience member i feel like i can enjoy something so much more yeah a hundred percent yeah no, I agree with that. Absolutely. I feel like I am cradled. Blue. I don't know. I don't know anything about cradle, but I just, they keep saying it. <laughs> uh, all right. And then finally, Bogdan Danbog says, now that you have seen more of Sanderson's world building, can we get a prediction about the wider Cosmere from each of you? Big prediction time. Go weird. So, okay. Mm -hmm. The Cosmere. Okay verse is okay. actually a social experiment done by the FBI and it is on a very small scale so you know how they when they're making movies and they have like small scale like sets that they film okay. things on and being stuff destroyed and stuff like that the Cosmere is a, a big room with a bunch of different like Lego sets essentially where like they 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 put into effect like um D different things and characters and stuff and they let it play out in real time so that they can then be studied cool great love that 
basically insurgent. Um, <laughs> are we ever getting saying, that final movie? Fuck are we ever no. getting that final movie? Um, um, all right, my big prediction is that all of the Cosmere books are setting up different planets and the magic systems that exist on those planets so that we can have uh, the final Cosmere book, which will be an interplanetary arms race and war where all of the different Cosmere shards come together for a big old fight in space. No, I've got it. I've got it. Every, so if you take out every 16th page from each of Brandon Sanderson's book and you take the 16th word of each page, it makes the 16th Cosmere book, which is actually the conclusion and the answers to the Cosmere. It's funny, but I'm pretty sure they're already way past 16 books. Oh, I don't know how many books are in the Cosmere, so I, I, yeah. All right. We answered the questions. We did the thing. We did the thing. Boom. We are going next week into Elantris parts. Part one. Part, what do you mean part one? I think we already have more than, God damn it, guys. It was such a good idea. Yeah, the, it's no longer 42, it's 16. Um, Does anyone know what we're doing? What chapters are Yeah, we're, we're not in the spoiler chat, actually. So, I just believe we're doing just part one. Yeah, just part one. Atlantis, Atlantis part, part one is really long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Guys, Atlantis part one for next week. Read it. Um, yes. If you like this video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm goddess is hungry and we must feed her. This week, that algorithm goddess is high-low. Our segment where Clarus will do her high, I'll do my low, she'll do her low, I'll do my high. For the whole book, because when I was a kid, my blended family had uh, interpersonal issues that we solved by celebrating each other's highs and commiserating over each other's lows. Uh, Clarus, what is your high for... The, if you want to do the whole trilogy, do the whole trilogy. Uh. It's 300 pages for next week. <laughs> Okay, well, we better get reading. Fuck. Hopefully I can read on set. Um, Fuck. Don't do that. Fuck. Fuck. Um, Fuck. I definitely still want to write um, Lay Mists. Lay um, Mists, yeah. Yeah. Um, look down, look down. There's 80 on below. Look down, look down. Mare betrayed you, don't you know? Um. Fuck. Can we, can we oh, audiobook can we listen again. to audiobook yes, of Elantris? Thank you, Arzu. Okay, we are. Yeah, I'm gonna get that audiobook full sure. Are we reading the start of Elantris on stream? I don't think so. I don't think we own a copy. Well, we don't actually have it. Yet. We don't have. We don't own a copy of Elantris. Um, well, we have to get it anyway. So if you want to get that, I. What's your high? We'll try and think of. How do I pick a high for the entire fucking trilogy that I absolutely fucking adored? Um, I... I think my high for this book... It's gonna be a little, I don't know, feeling non-specific. But I, I, my high is that I have truly never been so emotional at the end of a series like this. Like... Uh, you guys, I mean, you guys know me. I don't, like, cry that often or that hard. You know, sometimes... I found like, the prologue on his website. Great. You know, or, like, a few tears. I... My high is that I felt so emotionally connected to these characters and their journeys. And also, like, just, like, the beauty in the moments of what happened, what it meant for the world. Like, like... Yeah. It, my, my, my high was the conclusion in a weird way. Mm-hmm. And I... It... it just made me feel things which seems weird but yeah that's my high <laughs> i don't know i don't know how else to say that yeah yeah what is your low uh my low is that the series lets the bad guys off the hook a little bit too much by saying oh ruin influence them to be bad my low was definitely the moment where say said was like the lord ruler yeah good guy i think like... if, if there's anything in it that isn't my favorite it's that yeah, but that is such a, like, small moment in yeah. this entire thing that, like, I genuinely loved, loved, loved this trilogy. I just like my bad guys to genuinely be, to, to, to earn their comeuppance and to be bad guys, but. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, uh, James asks, is that Seiza's opinion? No, no, it's definitely not. Like, we, well, we see the way it interacts with Ruin. We see the way it interacts with the citizen. We see the, the change the citizen makes immediately after having the spike taken out of him. So, like, to say that that's just Seiza's opinion isn't really true because... About we the Lord Ruler? No, about, about my... about Your thing about the Lord Ruler, maybe. But my... I think that's what they... My thing about all of all of the bad guys kind of being left off the hook a little bit, except for Straff. Who yeah. Who's the only one who really yeah. is allowed to remain a villain villain. Yeah, which is fair. I think I think James Ross' comment might have been about mine, because it is yeah, Seiza who, like, says that. Um, but it's also... It says it, but also, but also Ruin it's brags God about it. says it. No, like, but also has... ruin before says it ruin brags about it yeah i don't know it, it that's just like the, the, a little bit of a weird moment for me personally it, genuinely that is like the lightest of criticisms yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah what is your high for the book for the series i'm gonna do the book because i okay, had great yeah. highs for the other books yeah yeah, yeah go for and it and my high for the hero of ages is the line uh maybe she was the most worthy of us all i i'm misquoting it but it's just it is still the line that i think about the most she was the most she was yeah yeah but. of all of us who held the power she was the most worthy mm -hmm. uh it's still my favorite line it's my favorite line in the whole series um i think that it encapsulates everything that i feel about vin and everything i feel about the crew in one line uh and that she changed everyone and everyone changed her and it's just it is it it, it it is the thing that i will keep from Mistborn more than anything else yeah yeah um all right uh let's read the beginning of elantris <clears throat> elantris was beautiful once who's she no elantris was beautiful once it was called the city of the gods a place of power radiance and magic so the opposite of uthadel Visitors say that the very stones glowed with an inner light, and that the city contained wondrous arcane marvels. At night, Elantra shone like a great silvery fire, visible even from a great distance. Yet as magnificent as Elantra was, its inhabitants were more so. The light pollution. Their hair was a brilliant white, their skin an almost metallic silver. The Elantrians seemed to shine like the city itself. Legends claim that they were mortal, or at least nearly so. Their bodies healed quickly, and they were blessed with great strength, insight, and speed. They could perform magics with a rare wave of the hand. Men visited Elantris from all across Opalon to receive Elantrian healings, food, or wisdom. They were divinities, and anyone could become one. Sick. Oh! See, when when people were saying Elantris, I was like, that sounds like Atlantis. And now I'm like, oh, it's Atlantis. Like, <laughs> Which I, I, I love. Um, can a nerdy do the audible recording for this? I like better. Brandon Sanderson, if you want someone to read a book, uh, audiobook for you, I would love to do more audiobook re recordings. I think you have a great voice for it. I would, I would love to get into it. It's so hard as a dyslexic, but like, you can do more than one take. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, Talkmer says they read the rest of it. All right, I'll read the rest of the prologue. The okay, the Sheod, as it was called, the transformation. It struck randomly, usually at night, during the mysterious hours when life slowed to rest. The Sheod could take beggar, craftsman, nobleman, or warrior. When it came, the fortunate person's life ended and began anew. He would discard his old, mundane existence and move to Elantris. Elantris, where he could live in bliss, ruled in wisdom, and be worshipped for eternity. Eternity ended ten years ago. Crazy. Interesting. Crazy. Is it 16% of people that get chosen? I need to know. Um. Oh, man. Probably. <sighs> fun. Probably. Fun. All right. Thanks, y'all. Okay. Very cool. This was a fun book club. Uh, yeah. We will see you all next week for part one of Elantris. Yes. See you tomorrow for Dragonlance because you should be there. Come hang out. It's very fun. Session 10. We're going to go meet a gnome. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna meet a gnome. It's gonna yeah. be great. It's gonna be a good time. Um, buy the merch from the merch store because it's good merch. Thumbs up. Buy Misty Mountain Gaming dice. Use code Nerdy Ninety Fifteen. Go get yourself some gamer sex. Get some caffeine in your system. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to do the ad reads. Yeah, I was singing over you shilling like a little shill. Yeah. What do you? Your how? Shill. How are we gonna make money? I, do we need money? I, you know what? I wish that that were not the case. I know. 
But I wish we had more money so that we could pay other people more. <laughs> that is that is my favorite thing about like I love being able to hire artists for our shows. That truly brings me joy. And if that brings you joy, go buy merch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I wish I was a talented artist. That is one thing that just makes me sad. All go right. buy gamer subs. Go buy gamer subs. Code Clarus. C L A R O O S. Yay. Do it. 10% off. All Do right. Do it. Clarus, add a sex scene to the series. Mm. Uh, Vin and um, I was about to say Elaine. That's wrong. Ellen, they fuck as gods for eternity, and uh, you know what? I'm really happy for them because they have Mistborn powers. Do you think in heaven everyone has Mistborn powers? No. I don't think there's any powers. I don't think you would need powers in heaven. All right. Cool. I mean, you Seems can just do whatever boring. you want. Oh, so everyone does have Power powers. Power of imagination. Yeah so, yeah, so everyone has powers then in sure. that case. Um, I'm going to say that, uh, uh, yeah, I just, like, say that finally fucking bones down. That's true. He claps true. those cheeks. Oh, my God, yes, because yeah. Tindwill is in heaven. And he can have whatever size penis he wants. I bet Sazed like, immediately makes it, like, 15 inches. And Tindwill no, looks at no. it and is like, no. It's, no, that's no, not that's how not, this no. works. Put that away. And he's just like, I think that I have never had a penis before, and I do not know. Yeah. Perhaps it is too large. Yeah. Season. I am sorry, Tidwell. And then he makes it smaller. And then when Season she's like... Season study. Just right. You know, they, they Goldilocks it. It's a little too big. It's a little too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They find just that like seven right. inches and then... Seven? Clap the cheeks. Jeez. Clap, clap the cheeks. Bum, 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 clap the cheeks. Clap, clap the cheeks. Say the clap the cheeks. Clap, clap the cheeks. And Tidwell makes a big... Orgasm sound while says it claps those cheeks all night. Do 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 clap the cheeks. Clap.